Happy Holy Day, Moors, and welcome to House of Reawakening Minds. House of Reawakening Minds exists to provide for exploration and practice of spirituality and an enlightened community dedicated to honoring the myriad of sacred pathways to the Universal Creator. We are a holistic center for spiritual grounding, free thought, self-discovery, and Moorish science, an awakening experience for all ages. Tonight, we are pleased to welcome back our brother Abdullah El Tawid Mosi Bey and our brother Shem Malachi Bey. All right, this is not everyone. Yes, um, as you can see, our day's topic is self government, the key to freedom. Self government, the key to freedom. And uh, before I get into my main part, I want to just provide some clarity. I heard uh, a, a broadcast last week and um, addressing that there's a distinction, distinction between Morocco that we should not be using the name Morocco and that uh, only applies to the kingdom of Morocco that we should, only, we should be using the term Moorish nation so now, for those who, if you look at the, I have this construction on the board. You see here, China, Chinese nation. Mexico, Mexican nation. Nigeria, Nigerian nation. Now you don't see this, the term used Chinese nation, you use the term, the word is used China. You don't see the term used Mexican nation, Mexico. You see Nigeria used. So, Duali used the term Moorish nation. And what I think is that he wanted to make a distinction between us over here, the Moors over here in North America, and the, the Moors over in the, the kingdom of Morocco. But, I, what, but we need to use the word Morocco. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the Emperor of Morocco, His Pure Majesty, and the United States. So we definitely we need to make, we need to clear this up. We need to define Moor Station because it has been misconstrued and misrepresented as a sovereign citizen movement, an organization, a, a black people. So this, so we definitely have to provide clarity to what the Moorish nation is. And in doing that, we need to connect it to Morocco. That the term Moorish nation needs to be connected to the word Morocco and, all, and, and to the treaties the treaties between, the treaty 1856 between Morocco and Great Britain. The treaty of peace and friendship of 1787 between the Empire of Morocco and the United States. And what we're looking to, we talk about enforcing these treaties. And today's presentation is teaching the Moors on how to interact with foreign government agencies pursuant to treaties. So we will get into that as well and talk about the importance of self-government. We often hear 
people make statements that they're sovereign. You know, you'll hear that statement that nationalized more will make that claim. I want to claim my sovereignty. I get calls from all over, getting calls from all over the country from nationalized and conscious Moors making statements that they're going to claim their sovereignty, you know, that they're sovereign. What does that actually mean? What are they actually saying? The one of the weakness in this Moorish movement that I've seen over the past 28 years is that nationalized Moors acting indivi as individual. We have to we have to push and facilitate national unity. What does that look like? We continue to because that because the national unity has not been facilitated. You have nationalized Moors who are dealing with individual cases. They will deal with the traffic traffic case of you know going to traffic court. And they do that on their own. They'll go with a group of four or five nationalized Moors. And I've seen that pattern for 28 years. We need to be, we need to move out of that. We need to move out of that pattern and get into the level of treaty enforcement. For example, where we talk about where we have our Moors tags. But what the problem is that you have Moorish body politics who actually sell packages for fifteen hundred, thousand, five thousand, five hundred. These numbers I'm not making up. These are actual numbers. But they'll sell a package of information and you give them three a thousand notes or five hundred notes or two fifty notes. And then you teach the Moors what government looks like. It's what self-government looks like. They, what they know is packages. They come into this movement, become conscious of this movement, and they, they know about packages. You know, take this package, give me 500 notes, take this package, and you're on your own type position. We're going to move away from that. We have to teach the importance of proper government structure. The proper government structure would be not a package where you go into a reg a more registry or more census and you you transfer your vehicle from the United States foreign jurisdiction into the Moorish jurisdiction, and your will have the census will be sent up to the Hague Organization of American States, to the United States Attorney General, where you're not on your own. The Moorish Council will represent you on your behalf. That is not the structure that nationalized Moors see. They see on their own. Where the list of Moorish nationals are sent to the Attorney General, to the Organization of American States, to the Hague. And that we are, these are our Moorish nationals that we're going to be, that we're going to be representing and protecting their, protecting their rights and their interests. That more don't, are not used to seeing that. So, I want to continue here. Let's look at, we have originalists, constructionists. These are two principles of constitutional interpretation. Is also referred, construction is referred, also referred to as the plain meaning approach. 
north. The ordinary meaning, ordinary meaning approach, meaning approach, and the common understanding approach. Common understanding approach. Approach. And also textualist. Textualist. So these are the other these are the four terms that are used for constructionists. Let me explain. A constructionist is one who takes the position that uh, the original intent of the Constitution, the original meaning, should not be applied today as the Constitution, you know, as they say, they refer to as a dead document, you know, those who framed it are dead. Society changes, so you cannot use a, the original interpretation that you that the interpretation must match the changing of society. The interpretation must be flexible and not rigid. Whereas the originalists, like myself, take the position. That means should be fixed and not flexible. All right? Fixed. Their words must have a fixed historical and ascertainable. Meaning. Constructors will say that's hogwash. Words should not be, meaning should not be fixed. They should be fluid. They should not be rigid. They should be loose. So what this does, it leads up to a wide range of interpretation. It moves away from this concept of a rich constructionist moves away from the original intent. What is the original intent of the language from its original construction? So I want to uh, read something uh, Treaty of 16 about the Treaty of 1677. between England, King, uh, King Charles II of England, France and Ireland, 1677, and the Monty Party tribe and other tribes. Uh, in here. Show you the importance of etymology. Because these treaties, this treaty is over 300 years old. This treaty is still in the force, in effect. The merits of the tribes, the merit of the tribes, Article 7, that's Article 7 of the 1677 treaty, claim to be sure, hinged on the interpretation of the treaty. The treaty, written over three centuries ago, contains language that is in some respect archaic and perhaps attributes to meanings to words that are defined differently in today's understanding of English, of the English language. The parties, through the proceedings of other materials, have each presented support for viable alternative <laughs> interpretations of the treaty. The numerous possible interpretations of the treaty 
illustrate a latent ambiguity in the treaty's language. So, they refer to the language in the treaty as being archaic. Now, the etymology is important because as we are looking to enforce these treaties, we cannot use modern connotated meanings to interpret the treaties that are 300 years old. You can't use modern connotated meaning to interpret the Constitution. So this is where the, the individual meaning and the tent is important. I'm going to show you. So you also have the uh, J Treaty with uh, Great Britain and, and the United States. The Gantt Treaty between Great Britain and the United States. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1787 between Morocco and the United States. You cannot use a modern meaning that was developed 50 years ago to interpret the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1787. But this concept has to be taught. It's not taught in law school. This, this thing of mind is not taught in law school. They use the ninth edition of the Black's Law Dictionary. The students who are in law school this semester use the ninth edition of the Black's Law Dictionary. Not the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. I'm going to use Bouvier's the ninth. When I got my Black's Law Dictionary, they were, on the, they were on the sixth edition. That was uh, over 25 years ago. It's the sixth edition. Now they're at the ninth edition. Why not? If you were to do a comparative analysis of the, all the Black's Law Dictionaries, I've done three or four of them, you will see where they remove key phrases of a definition. But if you don't do that, you will know it. You would, you know, you are instructed that, you know, meanings change, constructionists. Society changes. Oh, that's 100 years ago. That's 200 years ago. That's 300 years ago. All right. But how are you going to interpret the Treaty of 17, 1677? The Gantt Treaty, 1814, between Morocco, between Great Britain, and the United States. The Jay Treaty, because these treaties are still in force, 1794. Treaty of Peace and Friendship, between, between Great Britain and Morocco, 1856. These treaties are still in force. So you have the Supreme Court Justice learned jurisprudence, the science that treats positive law. So we, I wanted to explain why etymology is important. Why epistemology, which is a branch of philosophy of how one knows knowledge, and how this is connected to self-government, a knowledge of the original intent. You cannot talk self-government if you don't talk language. Self-governments, self-authority, self-rule. So you gotta get your mind, as well as I say, go back to the state of mind of our forefathers and foremothers. That's the original intent, the contract. Original intent of culture, of philosophy, of rituals, ceremonies. Yep. So what the what the Europeans have done was use constructionist language to deconstruct our consanguinity, to deconstruct our nationality rights through language. Language and jurisdiction are tied. Jurisdiction is expanded or restricted to language. All right, here we go. Jurisdiction 
You get it? Come on now. I know people say they got subject personal jurisdiction, subject matter jurisdiction, territory jurisdiction. You gotta talk language. You gotta talk language. Let's talk jurisdiction and language. Because they can they can expand jurisdiction, expand authority, or restrict authority through what? Language construction. All right, here we go. All right, now Article 1, Section 1 of the United States Constitution. The power to interpret, I have to go interpret the law will. Uh, Article 1, Section 1 of the United States Constitution. The shall be, shall be invest, will be invested, will be vested in, give, give it to me. All, all legislative powers yeah, yes. herein grant. All, all legislative, but, but don't, all legislative power herein. Legislative power. Here, here and granted. Granted. Shall be vested. I didn't want you to do that. Huh? Here and granted. Will be. Will be. Will be vested. In a I, Congress. Will be vested. In a Congress. Of the United States. Of the United States. Uh, which shall. We can speak it in there. That's, good. That's fine. All right. Now, what's what's it? I put I put will. 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 Mm -hmm. right. Let me let me explain. I just changed jurisdiction. I'm explain. I just I did give you an example of what I mean. I give you an example of what I mean. All the state power herein granted will be vested. That's a totally different meaning. This is big time change. All right, let me explain. First person, speaker. Second person, person spoken to. Third person, person spoken about or of. So you have the new use of shall and will. So we have first person. I sh shall. I shall is future tense in the first person. The first person. If I use he, she shall, he or she shall, this doesn't mean future, future tense. He or she shall doesn't use future tense. He or she will use it means future tense. You shall doesn't mean future tense. You will means future tense. He or she shall conveys obligation. Totally different meaning. So Congress shall, that's not obligation. Is it obligation? 
You say, Kyle Michelle. Kyle the Brook. You say, all legislative power herein granted will be vested. All right, you ain't say nothing. There's no obligation there. What is the obligation there? There's none. There's no obligation. There's no bounding here. That doesn't, this doesn't bound him. The use of will doesn't bound. All right? So it doesn't bind them because you're using the wrong word. It's shall. That's why language is important. So you can, sh you can extend jurisdiction or limit jurisdiction through language. The word definition. All right? So I want to demonstrate the importance of language. Grammar. Grammar is very important in studying jurisprudence. Any question on the feed? Word definition and jurisdiction. I know people don't teach it like this, I do. All right. That means limit. All right. As in finite, 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 infinite is what? Not. This is make function as a negation. The IN in the word infinite find function as a negation. Not. Nothing. Alright? So this what? Nothing. No 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 limit. No limit. Finite limit. So when you're defining a word, what are you doing? Limited. Right, you're putting it in a box. Meaning that there's no other meaning that can be applied. This is the definition. You can't go outside. There's no, there's no, you can't go outside the limits or confines of the box, the confines of the definition, the jurisdiction. You can't go outside the, so the definition sets the juris, a jurisdiction, a limit, Charlie Roche said with the Charlie Roche show, 2007, when they talk about the Iliad case, the Cuban boy. And the case was a sound around language. Language played a huge role in the case. Charlie Roche said, whoever defines the language controls the issue. Because by defining the language, you are, you are controlling the jurisdiction over the jurisdiction because you can't I mean if you have the power to define language, define meanings, what are you doing? You're controlling the issue. Because you mean that, oh no, 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 that doesn't mean this. No, no, that, that doesn't mean no, it means no, it doesn't mean that. So you're locking out other meanings. You're locking out the meaning. No, no. We define it as this. Do you lock it out the means? So the constructionists are doing what? Locking out. Or redefining. Oh, did you say? The, I'm the, saying redefining. But yes. The constructionists, but in redefining what they're doing. Locking out. Out the original. Right. Means because they're redefining. So you're redefining, and you place the, that redefined definition into a box, and no other meaning, even the original meanings, can't be brought into the discussion. 
So I'm just showing you the power of the final. It's that sound power. So you're determining the issue and defining the power to define is the power to control. That's wrong. And they're controlling the I the foreigners. I mean because the foreigners are they're foreigners to the land. Europeans are foreigners to the land, and it's also foreign, it's a foreign jurisdiction to us. We know that Great Britain and the United States has great United States being a child of Great Britain as well as a child of ours. The United States is a child of ours. The United States is a child of Morocco That's right. and a child of Great Britain. Let me say it again. The United States is a child of... All right, the United States has two parents. The United States has two parents. Morocco and Great Britain. And sure, we'll get into that. And I'll go from the second stage. The United States has two parents. They will not be treated. So the um, definition, the power to define is the power to control. So this is why they, the Albions can't win with us if we go to the original intent. They want to lock us out of the original content, intent. So they created this constructionist, common understanding, ordinary meaning, plain meaning, textualist, you know, society changes. You can't deal with 200 year old means. I did explain, showed you that you can. 1677 treaty between Charles II of France, Ireland, and England, and several what they call quote unquote Indian tribes. Society versus New Haven. Society versus New Haven, United States Supreme Court case. Where they brought in the J Treaty, J Treaty between Morocco, between the United States and Great Britain. This whole concept that the the sub the British subjects won the Revolutionary War. That's a lie. That's they that's taught in schools. They beat the loyalists, you know, in the revolution, and they came together. And Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. We declared our independence and solely separate from Great Britain, and we're forming a new nation. That's taught in schools. My daughter's being taught that crap. <laughs> it's a lie. Prove it, I'm doing. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> like him. Because I would never say like him. I said it's a lie. That means I can that means I can prove it's a lie. Society of New Haven. Supreme Court case. Rule that pre revolutionary war treaties are still enforceable. And the pre revolutionary war did not extinguish rights granted under treaties. Yeah, the 1783 treaty between Great Britain and the United States, J Treaty between Great Britain and the United States, the Yan Treaty. Between Great Britain and the United States. These treaties are enforceable. So if the United States wonder if the subjects 
of the British Crown won the war, why did she exist and why is it still forcible? Why did, as far as iron out land issues, and then also referring to protection of our land rights, of the Moors' land rights, and navigating rights on, the, on our land. That, that is protected in the J Treaty of 1794 between Great Britain and the United States. Great Britain has jurisdictional subject issues here on our land. As I said before, we are Morocco and Great Britain are the parents of the United States. The Lenape Treaty of 1778, where we offered the the one of the renegades, the renegades who left, you know, the crown, left the colonies. The colonies did not break away from the crown. So that's constructionist. The colonies did not break away from the crown. The subjects didn't own the colonies. This, this, this contract, this understanding contract. The subjects did not own the, do not own the colonies. Never did and can't. They don't have the contract. It wasn't contracted to them. Based on contract law, that's all. It's just understanding. It's not complicated. It's not. It's just understanding contract. The colonies were not granted to the subjects. There's no contract granting any colony, English colony, uh, Pennsylvania colony, New Jersey colony, Georgia colony, North Carolina colony. Delaware County, New Jersey County, South Carolina County. There's no contract you can put in front of me granting a colony to subjects of the British Crown. They own what? Look at that, show me the contract. That says that. That they relinquish all their rights, you know, and give them to the subjects, and the subjects are now, now the subjects control the colonies. That never happened. There's no contract. Show me the contract. That's all. So, it's nothing, it's, it's, it's easy to win debates. It's easy. Just present the contract. That's it. You just close your mouth and have them present the contract. They, they don't exist. So how did they take, how did the colonies break away from the crown? The subjects fled. So they're refugees now. The subjects, refugees. Because they, they're only one. So they come to, they came to us. So we offered them a song. They came to a sovereign power. The Lenape Wars, a sovereign power. And they're using our ego. All over the world, on embassy buildings, consulate buildings. All over the world, using our, not theirs, and we all nationalized Moors and unconscious Moors. It ain't theirs. They're not using their seal. They're using the Moors seal. Oh, United States Embassy in Nigeria. That's a Moors seal. United Embassy in France. Moors seal. We're not, why don't you know United States still with that? What what still they created? That's theirs. What seal did they create under their authority? What seal did the subject create under their authority? Show me. 
That's all of us. That ain't theirs. I'm explaining why we're their parents. I said, Barack, the Moors, the Morocco, and Great Britain are the parents of the United States. This is very clear. Got to be clear. So who has the who has the authority? We're looking at them as the authority because we don't know the history. And they're recognizing that through Supreme Court cases because they because Supreme Court justices know Jewish prudence. They're not dealing with, well, you know, um, I guess 300 years ago, they're looking at the original intent of the contract. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with Jewish prudence. Any questions? Let me define jurisdiction. Let me yes. define jurisdiction. Yes. Just one question. Uh -huh. Yes. We have a question online. Um, they say the supreme law of the land is the political constitution of a nation. But how to know? if a nation has true sovereignty. So read that question, please read that. The supreme law of the land is the political constitution of a nation. But how to know if a nation has true sovereignty? All right. Well, let me, let's look at the United States Constitution. Let's, let me direct it to something specific. The United States Constitution is not the supreme law of the land. I'll say it again. The United States Constitution is not the supreme law of the land. All contracts or engagements enter into before the adoption of the con this Constitution shall be valid against the Constitution, that's against the Confederation. All treaties made or shall be made in pursuant thereof shall be the supreme law of the land. Once again, Morocco and Great Britain are the parents of the United States. Society versus New Haven, again, made it very clear. That's 1836, Society versus New Haven. Made it very clear that pre-revolutionary war treaties, the pre-revolutionary war did not extinguish rights granted under treaties. The treaties are the law of the land. That's right. Once again, the, the rebels on the run came to us, and not the Lord, uh, and sought asylum. That constitution, not the constitution, not the stream of all land. Treaties are. They're under the Treaty of J Treaty, Treaty to Meet the Friendship, you know, United States of Morocco. These are pre existing engagements and debts owed. Debts. And engagements already obligations, pre existing obligations and debts before the adoption of the United States Constitution. So they write to the Constitution and now what they absorb of the debts and obligations? United States ain't sovereign, or what? They're sovereign for what? But they got the real money. The real sovereign. They have the land. That's right. Well, hold up. Uh, hold on. Babylon and Chains, 1600s, got tens of thousands, were transported by sardines. Babylon and Chains, got 
tens of thousands. They what? Empty the jails and put on boats. Contract between Morocco and England, Morocco and France, Morocco and Netherlands. Not with the subjects. What name the subject got? They saw what? What's what they saw? What's that? What? They got a name? Well, they got a charter? Okay. What land they got? How they how they saw? What saw they got? Okay. So, in 1777, here's the pure majesty, Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, the one who George Washington wrote in December, on December 1st, 1789, recognized the United States. That's 1777. The following year, the Lenape Moors, Born in the treaty with the United with the subjects, recognized them. They were recognized by sovereign. They're not sovereign. They were recognized by sovereign. So they're using, got permission to use the names of the English colonies. New Jersey. Well, that's not theirs. New Jersey. The name. Remember, remember, Pennsylvania Colony, Virginia Colony, New Jersey Colony, Delaware Colony, South Carolina Colony, North Carolina Colony. They didn't create those names. I mean, the British subjects, the subjects did not create those names. Those are the names of the colonies. They got permission to use the names. So where are they solving that? Solving the what? They're telling them the crap, the story in their textbooks. Because they want to have the, the subjects of the crown, the British crown, Believe that they're sovereigns. You got these Europeans, hear me out, these European freedom groups. How about they sovereign? No, you're not. You're a British subject. Stop lying. You're a British subject. You ain't the, the sovereignty crap you talk about, you know, where we sovereign. <laughs> you're a British subject to this day. Any other questions? Jurisdiction. Jurish means law. Dick as in diction means speak or say. The power to speak, authority. The power to speak. Our power, the Moorish power, the Moorish power to speak is inherited power. Is inherited power is succession through succession. So we are the direct descendants of those who signed, negotiated, signed those treaties. The Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1787. Right. Lenape Treaty, 1778. Treaty between Great Britain and Morocco, 1856. And a host of other treaties. We are direct descendants. That's secession rights. That's inherited power. So we are asserting our inherited divine natural power. We ain't asking the Europeans for nothing, because then to ask means what? That means you to ask means you're not inserting the sovereignty. To ask a subject, a British subject, means you're not asserting sovereignty. Your sovereignty. All right, what's the problem? Individualist, that's the problem. I'll tell you what the problem is. Individualist. Fighting cases on our own, not organizing the government structure. 
That's the weakness of this Moorish movement. Let's change the weakness of this Moorish movement into a strength. National unity. That's the power. No individualism. That's not the power. I'm sovereign unto yourself. No problem. Don't call me nobody either. <laughs> All right, one, you can't claim that. That's all. That's I'm gonna jump challenge. I'll challenge anybody. I'm gonna tell you why. You can't make that claim. Why? There are existing trees. You already have it. You have an existing sovereign power, an existing Moorish state. So you can't claim to be on your own. Because you have an existing Moorish state. We have existing obligations on our part to Great Britain. Treaties we enter into. Treaties that are having wars and masonry dating back to the 1600s between Morocco and France, Morocco and Netherlands, Morocco and England, Tripoli and England, between Tripoli and France. These are the pre existing obligations at a what? An erected state without erecting a new state. We're not erecting a, and we're not asserting a new sovereignty. There's no new state created. Where's the evidence? The trees. We already recognize. Great Britain recognizes us. France recognizes us. The Netherlands recognize that. Where's the evidence? Go to Morse Mason. The trees are that my evidence. The trees are my evidence. That's, we have what's called customary international law. Through customary international law. We talk about treaties before the establishment of the United Nations. Yeah. Treaties before the establishment of the League of Nations. Treaties before the establishment of the Hague in 1899. She was before the establishment of the Pan-African, Pan-American Conference in the early 19, uh, 1800s, late 1800s. She was before the establishment of the Organization of American States. These trees are enforceable. So the trees are not enforceable on their own. We have to enforce them. This is why they classified us as black nigger color right. and created a fictional history through, so, through apartheid and social engineering. By not knowing who we are, we cannot know what? Enforce the treaties, therefore what? And command obligations on both parts. So as long as you don't know who you are, there's no obligation on their part to do what? What's the obligation on that part? You don't know who you are. Yeah, and as long as you play an individual, That's right. I'm stopping up to myself, game. There's no obligation on that part because the treaty can be only forced through government to government relationships. Right. Oh, I'm stopping up to myself. I want to force the treaty on my own. All right, great. Good luck. Yes. You have a question online. Mm -hmm. It's from, um, well, I can't pronounce, but anyway. Um, Dal Suke Takahashi, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, your um, appellation. No, that's the wrong one. This is from um, what's over here. William Langford Austin, Peace Islam. This is so good and informative. I dare, I dare interrupt, but there are those Moorish people who are still saying that we are Moorish, but not American. I need the word American and our use of it, including its origin, clarified once and for all.
Um, 18 on 28, Webster's Dictionary, definition of America. Google that please. 1828, Webster's Dictionary of the definition of America. 1828, 1828, Webster's Dictionary of America. American, America. 1828 Webster's Dictionary. Now this is 19, this is 1936. In the 1936 Webster's New International Dictionary, three definitions for America. They have two, there's, you have one originalist and two constructionist definitions. That's 18. American adjective pertaining to America, American noun, a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals or copper colored races found here by the Europeans, but now <laughs> applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. All right, so let's look at, we got originally, all right, originally, originally, Applied. So let's see what they have really applied. To the aboriginals. To the aboriginals. So they put it but now. So I'll just put these two there. Okay. Applied to. Yeah. Alright, so originally applied to. Originally applied to. And we have but now. So come on, that slide more. I also got a. Uh, it also got. Uh, let, me, let, me, let's, let me focus on this first. Let me focus on this. So just trying to analyze language. Don't allow the European, the Albigans, to trap you with the constructionist view. The but now is constructionist. That's constructionist. Ordinary meaning approach, common understanding approach, that's constructionist. Originally applied, that's originalist. I give a rat, you know what? what the British subjects think. But I do care a whole lot what my native autochthonous, aboriginal, indigenous, Moorish brother and sister think. I originally applied to. How can but now be entered? How can but now ever have any standing unless the autochthonous native indigenous Aboriginal Moors are smoked in the head and pumped by the British subjects? But they said, but now, words change meanings. I'm telling you, I don't know what you're talking about. This is 2019, you can't deal with you know, originalness. I don't want my brothers and sisters to think like that. So as long as we, we're cool on that, we, I don't give a rats about what the British subjects think. I don't care about what the British subjects think. And the British subjects, that's the but now. All right? So, yes. Um, there, there's another question from Dolores. Ellison was, why hasn't the current Morocco enforced the treaty you speak of with the Awakened? All right, let me, let me, I, let me think, I think she means, I'm not sure. But she has to correct me. I think when she means current Morocco, she's referring to the kingdom of Morocco in North Africa. The current Morocco is an empire 
where I'm standing right now. The current Morocco is where I'm standing, the empire. The current kingdom of Morocco is what she's alluding to, is what I'm thinking. All right. She's not alluding to the current. The one who negotiated the treaties between France and Morocco in the 1600s. France and uh, Morocco and Great Britain in the 1700s. Morocco and England in the 1600s. Morocco and the United States in 1787. Morocco and Great Britain, 1856. This is the current Morocco. I'm standing. In the Morocco embassy, it's about organizing our people into government structure to enforce these treaties. We are the current Morocco. We're the current Morocco. We, you know, I'm an Arab. She's talking. She's listening to me. You know. She's herself. All right. It doesn't read Morocco, it says kingdom. So she, that's completed. Kingdom of Morocco. It doesn't, it's not this, it's not Morocco. Let's clear it up. Let's talk about what's not. The official name is not Morocco. It's not the official name. The official name is the Kingdom of Morocco. Empire. Empire. The Moroccan Empire. All right. Or the Moroccan Empire. We can do that too. The Moroccan Empire. Yeah, Moroccan Empire. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Tunis, Algiers, Tripoli, um, Spain, Portugal, this one, Sicily. Um, India, Muslim, India, say if I'm Morocco, I'm going to explain it. If I'm Morocco, Tunis, Sicily, Spain, Portugal, uh, uh, southern France, southern France, all right? So, from 1711, there's a book called The Muhammadan Empire, the uh, under Muhammadan rule. Yeah. You talk about the, the um, southern. You talk about the uh, the Albanian Peninsula mm -hmm. in Spain. Yeah. Yes, yeah, like I, I have Spain, okay. Portugal, southern France, Sicily. Okay. Yes. So. There's a book called The History of the Moroccan Empire, History of the Moorish Empire in Europe. We ruled modern day India for a thousand years. A part, large part of Portugal, Spain, Sicily for over 500 years. Constant this part of the Moroccan Empire. Because you got to know the history. Just can't. And then you also have North America and South America. Part of the Moroccan Empire. Not just North America and South America. And he said, no, actually not. The Moroccan Empire, the sun never set on the Moroccan Empire. Why? Because it was vast. So they need to know this history. They know they need to know our power extended to parts of Europe. Modern day India. 
North Africa. I mean, you add that too. And West Africa. I mean, that ain't done. What they call North Africa today and parts of West Africa. I ain't done. Is she talking about this Morocco? She talking about this Morocco here? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. North America. Thank you. She me she kicked me in line. North America. South America. I got to do this. I got to do this. You want me to explain? I got to do this. All right. Central America. Yeah, I ain't going to let nobody live in my understanding and enjoy the islands. That's the study. Rock and fire. History of the Moorish Empire in Europe, volumes one, two, and three by S.P. Scott. The Midi the Mohammedan Empire and the medieval of the Mohammedan rule. The um, Mohammedan Empire on the medieval rule by, uh, uh, as by Stanley Poole from 711 to 1763. So our power expanded the world. We're talking about a vast power. We need to know that. We need to not, we don't, we can't limit ourselves you got to know the history of the vastness of our power. So when I when I write some of the things that I, when I do when I sign was a masonry, and I um, some of the points that I have I say um, may you may uh, more than masonry uh, expand your knowledge, awaken your comprehension to. The power, the vast power of our Moroccan Empire. I'll do it until most of day, whatever it be. Yes. It's a, just want to share another, um, just to throw another book out here, um, written by Albion. It's called Tudor, English, and Black, and Not a Slave in Sight. And it, it talks about from, from musicians to princes. Um, it's written by this, uh, a historian, Miranda. Kaufman opens um, a window on the hitherto unknown part play, you know, they're using the word black people in the 16th century England. But it says, um, here we are in Wargate, I say. It is called that because it was a great hub of black Tudor life. You have to be careful with anything like that, she went to, because all, for all you know, this was a moor. It's the same with family names and emblems. If your name was Mr. Moore, you'd have a choice between more hen or a black or more, it wouldn't be ne it wouldn't necessarily say something about your race. That's just a quote from the book. But she's basically showing that in 16th century, what we you know when you, when you see everything about the Tudors, you don't see us. You don't normally see more unless you see them in a slave um, depiction. But that's not what you know this historian is showing. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So you're looking at. In J. Rogers' book, just to expand on what you're saying, in J. Rogers' book, Nature Knows of Color in Chapter 6, the Negro as more in European coats of arms, European families. He has, he displays over 100 more European aristocratic or amalgamated moors, amalgamated moors, coat of arms, and kinship crests. And there's 50 names that J. Rogers lists of 50 varied forms of more in Italian, Dutch, French, Greek, German form, M O M O R H R M O H R M O R E R M U I R. All right, so various forms. I said amalgamated moors. They're not 
ambiance. Queen Elizabeth is not ambiance. She's a whore. Prince Charles is not ambiance. He's divorced. Prince Eric is not ambiance. He's divorced. Are you going by looks? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, no, dude, we don't know what he's talking about. But look, look at look, 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 look at this picture. You see it in more. See? Yeah, you see it in this picture more. Is she not out beyond? Yeah, I said that. I said that. Yeah, you quote me. I said that. Yes. I'm not going to make more. You have the Moorish bloodline all throughout Europe. And J. Rogers' book, Ancient Lord of Colorado, chapter 6, displays the coat of arms of these Amagan Moor, Raider Moors, kinship, or they call more, uh, families. They have dark, dark, Wesley Snipe looking. Right in the, right in the, the um, coat of arms and, and family crest. J. Rogers' book, and then you can go online. There's hundreds, there's Thousands of them online. You just Google that. The um, Moors and, and European coat of arms. And you'll see you'll see a whole list of them. You see pictures. You're going by constructed history. Yeah, today, class, we're going to learn about Western civilization. We're going to talk about the, the history of Europe. We're going to talk about the history of Europe. What are you talking about the history of Europe? Where are you learning that? Where are you learning the history of Europe at? Europeans don't learn the history of Europe. Did, you, did, did European children don't learn the history of Europe? These people in colleges, they're not going to learn the history of Europe. Where are you learning that? When you learn know, history in your back, what school you still give me school? Where's the history in your back? What school? Tell me the school. Give me the professor. I knew some professor. I know some. But you know, you know him? Professor that teaches history in your Oh, 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 oh. I, oh, there's a course called that. Oh. Oh, you going by that? I know there's a title of the course. Well, that's not history in your not, and we're not prominent in the textbooks. And to talk about the history of Europe, and we're not prominent as Moors, Dukes, Earls, Knights, that nobody mean Wesley Snipes. If you don't see, then they're not history of Europe. We gotta be clear. Because we've been, we've been given a constructionist history. We don't know our power. Once again, Morocco and Great Britain are the parents of the United States. And only, O-N-L-Y, Morocco and Great Britain have the power to enforce the United States Constitution. Let me say again. O-N-L-Y, only, Morocco and Great Britain have the power to enforce the United States Constitution. Why? I just went through it. It's our power, along with Great Britain, that brought that, that what? Authorized them to come into existence. All right? I want to bring up Shem. All right? I want to bring up Shem. I want to thank y'all for giving me your attention. All right? You paid the way for Brother Shem. Yes, you did. You go. You made it up. You made it too. Bro. All right? Absolutely. Hey. I love it. So you come up. I got something to go behind now. Yeah, I'm going to write some stuff on the board. Come on up. I got something to go behind. So we get started. Thank you, brother. And then I can uh, put those notes. Yeah, you want me to write those notes? I can write the notes on the board. All right, here you go. Thank you. Turn around. Uh, All right, go. All right, Justin Contract. I love what you did today, Nobles. Um, because I'm going to pay the floor for me to bring in some things 
briefly about when you said the United States is not sovereign. And this is where we have to understand why the United States wanted to use us as surety. Because when they came over here, they came off a boat. And they were refugees, by the way, because they left their land fleeing for shelter and protection. On the other hand, we didn't leave our land fleeing for shelter and protection. We was already over here. We was made in bindings in our own land by our people. So I'm not going to get them out beyond credit. I'm going to say a lot of this happened to us because we was, had a regulated thing of selling our people in commerce to go on the other side of the world for others because the kingdom became expanded and we needed to have someone to do the labor. When our kingdom was expanded, Morocco, we had to go to different parts of the world to um, build up civilization because a lot of us was considered as the Masons. Uh, come the way. Okay. Oh, I thought I can't go. This good right here? Okay. Now, we had to go over there because we had skilled Masons that was through excavation, great architect builders. Um, they were navigators. And we had to sometimes send our people over there to do the work because the other nation was less favorable. They didn't know or understand um, how to do a lot of architect design and matter of fact commerce. And do setting up law systems and libraries and education institutions for them to learn the language. We had to learn their language and they had to learn our language. And nobody's talking about this. How we got like this, make like we was cowards. Mm -hmm. No, we got like this because we used to take our people and sell them for, for good. Now, we all, we used to consider as the, let's say, the creditor. Um, oh, keep talking. Okay, we just sit as the creditor. You want to sit down? Let me sit down. Yeah, sit down. Because I thought, okay, I see my whole face. We used to consider as the creditor owner, controller of the Lolian title through the blood DNA of our mothers and fathers. Every time a, a woman married, if she takes in a foreign man or a foreign uh, nation, when she has the baby, that baby has entitlement rights to the land. And that's why he was real keen on not letting us marry their women. They would murder us and, and poison us and don't kill the women. They'll take the women to have the uh, they take the women to have babies. And then they will coerce the baby, psychological coerce the baby, and they would put the baby on a social engineer. So now because he came from the mother, she already got blood pedigree rights of the original Lodian title. Now by him coming from her, they brings him up. He gets up an age, he writes off through his signature, his people rights. Or the mother would do that. She would have a daughter, and the daughter would do that through the changing of the blood. And when that happens, that creates what you call a mutation in the blood. That's why you got these wild chromosomes, and these people got this kind of chromosome because that's a mutation in blood. They're not teaching this stuff here. Uh, they're trying to still, they, 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 we came from being the Aloni and title holders to now becoming the sureties. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, collateral held in trust. Mm -hmm. Now, they was the uh, refugee. We were not a refugee. We already had the dwelling. We had a permanent dome south that we inherited through birthright. They came off a boat. They was considered as refugees. Now, what they did was they had the creed reverse it. They went from being a refugees to a citizen, that means to a dwelling. And how that happened is, they be first became a subject of the crown. Once they become a subject of the crown, and they lost that subject status, they went back to being a refugee, they flee. And they needed shelter, and they needed protection. They're not gonna tell them, this is written in Tamar read the treaty, the Lenape Treaty, that's what we gave them, right? Shelter and protection. So that means it was a refugee when they came to us. So whatever you taught in school, that's a lie. According to that document, your forefather said it, and I'm going to go further. 
After the, the first three they signed, they went to France for Shelton and Matesha. Then they went to the Little Matters. Month later, Shelton and Matesha. Then, for some reason, the Emperor of Morocco, George Washington, by the Emperor of Morocco on that. Now, let me straighten this out so everybody can understand this. When he wrote that letter, that letter, that letter was not sitting on the other side of the world. He wrote that letter to the Moroccan government right here. See, they played the game with the people, because they know the word America means the land of the West. They know Morocco means the land of the far West. Why would it, people sitting on the eastern side of the world tell you that Morocco means the land of the far West? When you say the far Western Hemisphere, you in the east, what are you talking about? You're not talking about down in Africa, but that's considered the east. All the way up to Asia. That's all in the east. So what are you talking about? The land in the far west. Talking about Morocco, which you call North America and South America, Alexa. So you know it's kind of strange that it say, it don't say the United States of the Cherokee. It doesn't say the United States of the Wichita. It doesn't say the United States of Great Britain. It doesn't say the United States of France. It doesn't say the United States of Spain. Portuguese. Germany is said the United States of Morocco. Now let me say something. That means that you got two parents, and I'll break that down when he said, you got a natural mother and you got an adopted mother. Your other parents threw your ass out the house and the other ones adopted you. That's what happened. Morocco adopted you, and you have to say United States of America, because what you're saying, the United States of the far west hemisphere, that's Morocco. See, you don't want to put that there because I wake the people up. So that, that's what he means. So y'all, any y'all deal what he said? He's right. They have two parents. One is the, like the biological parent. They got kicked out of the house. Here come another parent adopting you, taking you in their house and feeding you and taking care of you. You got two parents now. So that's what he tells me. He's right. They say United States of America, because you look at the word America, you say Mexican. And you said a land of far west. Now we're going to get to the place here. What the United States people were before they became citizens. Refugees. You hear me? Refugees. One, they're looking for shelter and protection. They don't have no dwelling. They came off a boat. Now, when, it, when the little nappies, France, and Great Britain gave them political jurisdiction, they had a dwelling. That's how they became a citizen. Remember, the word citizen come and play when it was under the, of, 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 you know, of, um, of the crown, they were called subjects. Mm -hmm. Then when the crown allowed, accepted them as saying, they accepted them as political organization, they have a name citizen. That means they got a dweller now. They let you dwell and you can dwell. That's how they got it. There was an infant, infant. I tell people, I don't like to say they're a nation. I don't like people don't like to hear that. But the treaty said, if, if the, if, at that time, if your parents consider you to be something, you that. In their eyes. Morocco did call them at some time as a country in the treaty. I'm not going to argue with that, because I wasn't born when that was signed. So I don't want to be like them start throwing things out there. But I will say this, you told me you was an infant. Now when somebody see you an infant, that means you, you can't do nothing for yourself. So that means you have to have the help of Morocco. You have to have the help of Morocco. So now what they did is took the Aboriginal people it made us the surety. I'm going to show you what they did. They, are, they was the surety, the collateral held in trust. Our, they was the debtors obligated to pay debts and obligations to who? The crown, always. And also, they were considered as the beneficiaries in as the trust, that they could reap some benefits from the crown for their labors and stuff that they do for the investment of the land for the indigenous people. They turn around and when they got their political standing, 
He came up with a plan. The plan was to make the Aboriginal indigenous boys journey. So they could pay, they could just show off their debts. So they came up with a scam. Had them war against each other, turn on each other, miseducate them, and then take away the rights from the mother. That means we have to separate the, the uh, kinsman structure of the house, a woman being protected by her man, her husband. We destroyed that. And they started destroying that after Lincoln got assassinated after the Civil War. That was being destroyed. That's substance. And they started making us the Aboriginal people as the sureties for their debts. Now, somebody say, they don't need no gold or silver. All you need is to make the floating title holders of the land, the inheritance holders, to the land, the surety, and you can fund them anything you want to do. You just have to operate as a CEO of whatever you're creating. The corporation, the, the, the state of origins, which had the government. You have to have the trustee, the legislative branch. Then you got to have the the uh, uh, the fiduciary, treasurer, clerks. Then you got to have the banker, the judiciary department. Now you see what's going on here? They make, they run in banking, and they get you right through the system by making a deposit by your nationalization papers. What is your birth certificate? When your mother goes into a foreign vessel and she pushes you out, she neither goes in and say who she is her blood pedigree, her descendants, and what nation she's from. She goes in and push you out on a foreign vessel, but I mean the foreign jurisdiction because that building is incorporated within the state of origin. Now what happens? She gives her baby, which is her real substance, an English name, or French, German, uh, Spain, Spaniard, uh, French, whatever you call her name, European nation name. That's called a European English or European nation pedigree stockholder name. They right away take it as a nationalization instrument, the registration form, and they created a certificate and they place, places it to the Department of Commerce, the Central Department of the United States, the District of Columbia, which is a foreign country, and that's the law. The Department of Commerce it goes into the international trade platform. Now you are considered as a beneficiary in a trust. And that trust beneficiary status, you're a ward, I mean, you're an incapacitated uh, person. Now, I wrote it down, the definition of incapacitated person, so you understand when I say they treat you like a ward, that means um, a mind made mental structure institution called neighborhoods, residential areas. That's what they do. Now, you're sure. Now, you're not even sorry no more. You don't have no inherent rights. You don't have nothing. And they can take you now, and they can manage you, and they can uh, invest you. What comes behind that? Your energy. You're working. Running, you work in the field for them. You work in the streets. You're, you're, you're working. You're in servitude. That's called voluntary servitude. It's being done to psychological coercion, social engineer where you become in a middle retarded state that you ever see a person that he can eat for himself, he can talk to a woman, but he doesn't have the, or she doesn't have the ability to know when somebody is stealing from them and taking advantage of them. You in that kind of state of mind, you don't know you're a functioning person. They make you enough to be your functioning, you're incapacitated. This is why you need protection, and this is why you always need shelter. I don't care if you got a billion dollars, you're a billionaire. Bill Costley had to go to what? An attorney to get protection, defense. Then he had to go before the banker and say, hey, excuse me, can I can I get a, a, a house arrest and stay home? Now he wants shelter. So with all that money, you still your status put you right into that. Because they can take it right away through the jurisdiction because of your status. So they made us the surety. They made us the real substance of the properties held in trust as collateral. So now that the state of origin is the United States can run their business. Okay. The United States can run their business now. This is why it's important that we understand that we have people that have what you call synagogues, mosques, 
churches, but you don't understand the congregation power. You said you got a church. That's a building. But where's the congregation? The congregation got to fill it. Like something filled your body, something filled inside of your mother that made you form into a body. So you need something to fill that. So the problem we got here is we need government structure. And no true Ali set up the most tip of most tip of holy science, scientific of you know how you set it up. And what happened was they did not understand what Noble Jurali did. Because if they did, we won't be the shit we are now. They won't be still not perfect. And rather than them go out communicating and contracting and enter to treaties among each other, they went into the wrong, the wrong direction. Like the ship's selling the wrong direction. You're in the water, but you're going all the way over here. You never go to your neighbor land. You never navigate your way. You know how to get home. So we never got home. We lost that sea. So we consider dead. Your man, he go man going to read the will of the man worth forty-two trillion dollars. He's reading. This man owned a whole empire. He's supposed to have a hundred kids, children, offspring. He go and read the will. You know all these people sitting. There, he calling their names, and they sit right there. They like this. And know what happens? Somebody stand up. Excuse me, um, I'm here for that matter. Yes, they're, they're all right there, the Jerry kids. They're sitting over there. They have a problem, you know, they're incapacitated, they wards. What you mean? They have mind, mind damage. They don't know who they are. Okay, uh, who's going to take over the state and the audience? They do it. Damn, this is sweet. If they have any babies, let's make them, let's make them the same way. Because they may, they may have a relationship and have a baby. That baby may not come out being like them. But if they have any relationship, let's take their baby from them and let's psychological coercion and social engineer to be just like them. But function. That's what they're doing. Welcome to the mind control game. To a school, a school is the education system. This is the state of origin, the social trust, actually. <laughs> the CFO is the executive branch of the state of origin. The trustee is the legislative branch, condition where we discharging the debt. Now I'm explain what this means. Can't no money get let go unless you go to the Senate, the House of Representatives. You ain't the state and get no money unless they approve. The United States is something similar. Trump couldn't get no money because what Congress wouldn't approve it. You know what I'm talking about? They're the trustee. The banker, the bank, or the banker is the judiciary branch. They're okay to the approval. How these people should release, deal with their laws and stuff. The counties and administrators are like the county agencies that's working for them, doing the county taxes and stuff like that for them. So this is the banking structure of the state. But to do all this, you need insurance. You need collateral. That's the Aboriginal indigenous people, their state. Now, the United States did not, could not claim anything of the land. Neither France, Great Britain, Spain, they, get out of here, you ain't nobody. You don't own no land. They came up with a plan, the ball. Statutory crime, we got a plan. You better work this thing right. So they went out, these esquires, went out to the indigenous, a few indigenous bands, and got them to sign treaties after Lincoln got assassinated. Now, when they got them to sign it, they made them sign it in a way, they wrote them up in a way to trick the people that the legislative power, the power is not in them, is not self-executed, they got to be determined by the Congress, the legislative branch. Then come on down here, if you want to be taken care of and get some money, Come to the an agency created by these two departments called the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Department of Interior. Now you're incorporated them. Now you form the power of them now. You're, now you're a refugee again. Yes, the Native Americans, yes, the Native the Indians, and so reservations are refugees. No, they're not. They got their own choice. Listen to me. I'm talking about etymology and epistemology of the word. They're being, they're being protected. 
and sheltered by the United States. Tell me there ain't no refugee. You can be a refugee and live good. But you just ain't got no control. I, mean, I can take advantage of it when I feel like it. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I can change as we go along. I don't mean, I'm not set by no original, no originalist fiction terms. You, you, you grinded your rights away. That's why you got to be careful about some treaties because some treaties, the people, I'm being honest, I'm not lying. They must have been on coke or heroin or dust or something to sign them treaties. Excuse me for saying it like that. I don't mean to talk bad about my people, but they must have been high. It's because I've got some of the treaty they signed. They must have been high or something. God damn, I mean, come on now. <laughs> but that's like I was saying. I don't mean no harm. I mean to just desecrate my people. But when I read something, I know you, if you have, you couldn't have been in your right mind to sign something like that. And your people writes over like that. Unless something's up. Unless, like I read in one of the treaties in history, one of the queens was married to an Englishman. Now you see what happens? Her son, her daughter comes up. That's her husband. She's going to do something for her husband that she had affection for to have his baby. So she sold her people out. That's what happened. Read the treaties of kings and queens. They were silent treaties. It wasn't just no men silent treaties. The women had power back then. The women had power back then. The women was married to them kings, them chiefs. They ran everything. Just like he was the Lord, they worshiped. When he was going out, who didn't take care of the nation? The women were. But we have to be careful even the treaties that we pick. Because remember, the United States is nothing but a franchise of the franchisor, like Abdul said. Um, but I'm going to get back to this. The state of origin is a franchisee of the franchise and colony. The colony is patented by the crown, not by them. The crown has a patent. What the crown allowed them to do is create a franchisee. It allowed them in a franchisee state to create their own municipal law, their constitution, the government itself. But that, but that law does not bind her. And her subjects, I mean the British subjects, is not bound by that because the British subjects come over here can always ask for protection under the common law, which is the law of the original charter. Yes, they can. They can say, well, that, that we don't know about this. These are, we, 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 we can't try the law. We got to go back to the original tent because of our status. We're not citizens of the United States, so you can't bring us under that law. That's why a counsel will come and be the judge. And he will bring the law. He will offer the law and the adjudicated opinion on it. So, if it's true you don't have a council in it, or a deputy, that means you're free to operate individually and stand on the tree. Individually means you can challenge it under the Judiciary Act. And by you being, claiming to be a national of the blood pedigree of those people that signed that treaty, you can stop the state by going into the federal courts under the right proper jurisdiction, standing on the treaty, because they got power to hear it then, and they will have to bring the treaty in to see the language of the treaty, what, how is the deal with this person when it came between a, a criminal and a and, uh, civil dispute. Now what happens is, if there is nothing in that treaty, and you say, well, since the people are partially together in blood pedigree, there's another treaty I had that you did claim. I am claiming to be that too. Uh, say the council got it here, Treaty of Tripoli. The Treaty of 1856. Now see what happens now? Now you, now you jam them. Now the state, remember the state's the only one to move. If you can stop the state from moving, they can't do anything. When you say they don't have jurisdiction, that means they can't prosecute. Just give me use your back one. Just give me a minute. Yes. So this, this is uh, actually a uh, great, uh, great lesson in getting, you know, a providing Continue, you continue to provide more and more clarity on self-determination is key to freedom. And uh, looking at the, the enforceability of trees, you know, as self-executed tree, as a tree where you don't need a legislative act to be enforced. So you have what's called self-executed trees and 
executed trees. All right, so self-executed, an executed tree, or non-self-executed tree, is a tree where the legislation, or the Congress would have to write legislation to enforce that tree. That's called, that's called non-self-executed trees. Where as I said, self-executed trees where there is no need in the legislative act to enforce those trees. So definitely, we'll continue right along. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate it. Uh, so we have to get back this status that we are we are a state of origin. Then we have to come in. I'm talking about individually now. We have to let our government be the executive branch in taking care of international affairs. Let our parliament be the trustees. Take care of international affairs. Let our judiciary, our council, I'm talking about internationally now, international, the council will be the judiciary branch. The council will take up these two offices here. Now, individually, inside our political jurisdiction and venue, we're supposed to be able to take the English nation pedigree stockholders in name, and we're supposed to be the chief executive branch, a CEO over that corporate name. We're supposed to create a trust and become a trustee that manages the property held in trust. What property are you talking about when you come back for the Cessic Trust? Your aboriginal title that been under your name, under English nation, pedigree English name. We have to come back because that is a, that's considered as a commodity. Once you get the body, claim the body back, mean your nationality, and do the documents necessary to get your blood pedigree and get your nationality set, then you can come back and claim the surety. You already claim the surety, it's your body. Now you have to claim what they use off of your body as value. Come back and get it off the exchange. But I mean, come back and get it. Get yourself the inches in it, where so you don't have to talk to them and do nothing with them, just do it. And when it happens, your counsel does everything for you. When he walks away, he walks in there, he deposits an instrument on the council seal of your, of your state of origin. He gets all the documents ready, so when you now start to do banking, investments, development, construction, you will be able to have, create the funds you need to buy your land, let me finish what I say buy your land. There's some things that we got to learn how to do ourselves, like a deed by treaty. You know, right now, that's something they don't teach that. A deed by treaty means when I come for this land, it's under a treaty. What treaty? The most powerful one you got to grab for your people. I'm getting this land, but I'm not doing your deed. I'm going to do a deed by treaty. You challenge me, and I'm going to rip your family out of the courts. <laughs> oh, we can't take that. I don't care about you taking it. Who cares? It's a deed by treaty. You got no rights in this. Then you do a release. A deed of release. You release. Get out of here. I don't need you. You don't have no title to the land. What do you have? You got a call. I'm not a, I'm not a, 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 a citizen of the United States. So I got to do a deed by treaty and attach a dignity bond to what you file. What the dignity bond means, you ensure any fires get on there, any blow ups. When you create a dignity bond, that means what? Put my own fire thing up here. I got a fire. I got my own security. This is what they do. I got my own surety. They using us as the surety by not knowing who we are. You can say, oh man, I got nothing. This is very delicate, and I, I tell people, you, you got to have a government-to-government relationship, like Abdul said, you cannot do some things individual, they bite you. Because they already know you deprived, you want that pension, and you want that work. So you have to go ahead and move, keep your mouth shut, just do. Do your paperwork, get the connection, to set, to set ourselves together, and we just start doing it. 
Then we get ourselves set. You don't tell them nothing. Because you got the knowledge. You know now. If you got a pension, you will cut my pension off. We got this. Go and do an audit on her pension. Oh, she got $10 million. That's an audit. That's wrong. Now do a county audit on it. Keep your mouth shut. Let them do a county audit on it. Now go ahead and create. You got every day created the trust. You got the organization created. You open a DTC account. You task the county praise to it for 15 million worth, and you create your bond. Then after you create the bond, when you going to do something, say, I'm going to buy this land, I'm going to get this business started, they're going to ask you, well, that's what the bank will say, excuse me, what's the surety? Oh, excuse me, I have to tell you, I have a $15 million surety bond that's on so-and-so, or movie ratings that's so-and-so, so-and-so, and you give a copy of that, and you get an accounting audit, and what are you looking at? The custody agreement. The vulnerable assignment, the power of attorney. This is the portfolio, fiduciary agreement, 456. This is the accounting audit. This is the custody agreement, the ledger and probate staff. The bank will say, uh, how do you want to do this thing? That's, they want to give it to you as a ward or a surety, or we're going to give you our $1,800 a month or $4,000 a month. Are you kidding me? But if you do it this way, now when they come around and start threatening your pension, it don't belong to you anyway, it's mine. I signed it over to my trust. I got the custody agreement. The bank account's already set up. You already notified the hands people to handle the bond. You snatched the fund. How you snatched it? By getting the full value by issuing letters of credit off of that. I'm showing you that how we can protect ourselves. This is how, when they try to come back and say, oh, you know what they're going to do? They stop everything. Oh, they did? They can't even stop me. This is why they want your social security number. We as boards got to understand one thing. They set a system up, and you got to know how to play ball. You can't get mad if you know how to play the ball. They, see, you can't play the box with them. You got to play outside the square box. Like Abdul said, when you, you know when you play in the box, when you play with their definitions, they got you now. Abdul, what? You are trapped. You got a hook in your jaw, you pulled in, you're getting scaled, you get getting gut open, and you're going over the fire. You a milk. But if you say, excuse me, um, before we do anything, you know the contents of your structure, your sentence, and your contents of your words, you know, they're not, they not, they not real. I mean, that's, that's not what these words mean, the way you use them. But what do you mean? Well, I, 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 I am a master in, uh, I do have a degree in, uh, uh, Etymology and uh, epistemology and, 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 and the root, the origin of words. And that's not what this word means. Oh, I don't understand what you're saying. So you saying the word security means this, it doesn't mean that. Well, according to what? That's, that's still not right. That's called de facto. The Supreme Court spoke about that. Illegitimate and illegal. You're using an illegitimate and illegal vice through the word to take substance, your substance from it. You can't do that. The teachers want to convey the language. You're robbing me not with a gun, not with a knife. You're not beating me. You're taking it through psychological warfare, I meaning through language, education. That just is worth sticking me up with a gun, robbing me, or beating me physical. It's no different. And this is how they steal it, so they don't want it to come together. So, like I said, y'all boys out there, they got, they got small science temples, religious groups, spiritual organizations. This, the treaties, as they were signed by the Satans or the Moorish governments, they were operating in their monastery ecclesiastic. They didn't really have a constitution, a Quran, or the Bible, or the Torah was a foundation in which they contract from the piety and deity. You can do it now. Me and Noble setting us up now for us, but for uh, us that's come together. It's called a letter of political legitimacy. We get it together. I already had it together. I'm putting it together. I'm, uh, for the caucus, we are creating an executive order coming from um, our government. But let me explain what I mean. When I say our government, we're not claiming to be an emperor or one ruling iron fist. We're saying that we're setting up a national government where everybody can come and be respected in this respected region. 
under the Orange Town cities and political state of origins. That's all we're saying. You know, like, I'm, I'm not trying to rule nobody. I just to be honest, I'm going to help the people get up, get it running. Then I'm going to give me about 200 acres and fish and go travel the world and join myself. And then talk about my man. When people see that, you know what I'm in the West? Rock with you. Know, I, that's what I want to do. Hey, you know, Shiv is responsible for the university bill right there. Yes! With good signs of being taught. That's what I'm about. I want to see people out there fishing. Our boats are out there fishing, pulling fish in. We come to the bay, they cut the fish. Fresh fish! That's real commerce. That's real culture. That's real water. A nation like that never going in poverty. They clean their water, they fish, they hunt, they livestock. They take the minerals of the land and they invest it as commodities. They bring it back to the country and take care of their people. They invest in other places in the world to send the wealth back to protect their people. So we have to get ourselves from being a, under the suretyship and collateral in their trust. You want to know the first step of law? Self. Know yourself. Know who you are. Then the next step is know what to do to get yourself out of that situation. Then when you get yourself out of the situation, what can you do so you never go back in that situation again? Not to shoot the people too. Like I do say, you can't do that by yourself. You can slip up, but they got you. You ain't got no military. Right now, I know a lot of people don't want to hear this. But you got to get from under that refugee state because you ain't fair. That's the international definition of refugee. One, fear to go back to his own country for fear and he needs shelter. He seeks shelter and protection from another country. So you are in a political jurisdiction asking for shelter, license, permits to do anything and then you turn around, something happens, you call police protection. You call a fire, man, that's a fire. You are, are out there. I'm, 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 I'm in the gym. Okay, when you get in trouble, why you got that attorney right there, that Esquire? That's protection. He's defending you. If somebody's defending you, they're protecting you. See, you don't see the common servitude that you're in. You don't even see it. So the first law is get out of that situation and not, not get back into it. Then you start going on and say, okay, now, what, how can I? Me and my people get our states back. That's what government government relationship is for. That's why they put these mind control people right now with DNA. Oh, you gotta, oh, Sally, you got the blood, you for the trial of Timberly down in Africa. Are you aware of Asia? Hold on, hold on, stop playing. Wait, 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 stop playing. The first, because your opinion was a government person. Came to Mexico, was your was validated. So why are you playing games? The DNA. So now if you stay out from that, see people see this is good, we got a problem is the people that say they Afro-American and and, and, and and American, you saying you Afro-American mean I'm from the West and I'm from Africa. That's how you say it. So you claim to be of both lineages. But watch this, they both got the same type of DNA. No, not too much different. So the you forgot the Africans was coming here before the so-called Europeans got here and colonized this too and took slavery. And stayed here, man, that woman. We married that woman. Ancient time we were doing that. That's why the African culture of Egypt is in South America and up in North America. It was frequently that we went back and forth there. That's no mystery. And remember now, if you look at the real map, Morocco, Peru, and the far west is connected to what? Asia up top. Canada, there's places you can go right to, walking right to the islands, and you write in, you write in um, Asia through York, on the top part. So they connected on the real map. So the map, they're down to you on the map now. Remember, this is called the land of the, of the, of the west. It is called the land of, watch this, the land of the gods. Why? Why? Why is this land called the land of the gods? Because of the piety and deity of our ancestors. That means we have water springs over here that the celestial realm used to give the power that we will step in and heal our diseases. That's where the fountain of youth came from us. We have ceremonies going over here that the rest of the world said, whoa, 
We got to get over there. You know what's going on over there in the Mexican? Sound what's the next one? People over there. What that mean? The land of the God. That means they look at us as gods because what we was able to invoke through our speech, through our prayers, our meditations. So they want to strip us of that. Mm -hmm. And they try to give it to themselves. No, you can't do that. You cannot strip us of that. Even in a binded state that we're in, we still visit by the Spirit. You can't get that from it. That's a, that's a royal lineage of DNA that was given to us through our mother womb. Like I was telling one minister one time, he told my man, a uh, woman, he my friend. I'm talking, I, I don't talk to people, and he's talking about, oh, oh man, come on now. All that female stuff. I said, brother, you, you must be crazy. You go to the book of Revelation, I do believe, he said, I see a woman in the cosmos, a woman, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and all that he is a crown of 12 stars. Get that, though. You got to be crazy. The caress, the anointing came through a woman. Hey, are you not are you crazy? She has a connection you don't have. Just forget about it. Like the earth, she's like the earth. She has a connection that she has to the cosmos, celestial rim, that when she has intercourse with a man, then the, the breath of life goes into her, not you, into her wombs and create an existence that's for what's inside of her to come out of her. And he's talking about her. That's why knowing you already knew that she's the one that can cripple us. Because she don't know. When she don't know her culture and her standing and her connection, we in trouble. Because she'll go do something crazy. And right be crazy out of line. And give up her birthright and don't strip, strip the land. I got a treaty where he talks about the private society. And they made it clear in this treaty if anybody hold government seats and all this, they got to go. I don't care, they never know. They, they will initiate them into these private temples. Because they need they, uh, they need their allegiance and they need them to give that oath. Mm -hmm. That they're going to carry out whatever it is. And know what it is? The secret is keep the air from knowing who he is. It ain't about no white and black thing. The only reason why the Europeans pass an all white statue because they want to declare themselves to be of the Asiatic people. Because over here they didn't have a status. They were considered as refugees, subjects. So by, by Congress passing, you bet I can continue to read the, the uh, white statue. You know when they passed the white statue after Lincoln got assassinated? They passed and declared up something. They declared. Nobody even said that Congress claimed to be white people. Now, why would Congress claim to be white? Because that was the status given to us. So, like your brother said, I'm not going to go into all these treaties because we got a caucus and we, we, we definitely teach the caucus uh, about what's going on. And like you say, it's all in the treaties. You can't come in when you go before the Hague or the, the Inter-American Court on violations of crimes in the Americas. The, the Inter-American Court made it clear that the indigenous people are entitled to the land, not the, not the colonization people. That's why they don't want you to get into a mature stage to, to do government to government relationship because you can bring these claims into the international arena and strip them. They're going to step up and say, well, we, we got treaties where, well, we handle everything. Where's it at? Where's it at? This is how you're going to try to lie. Oh, we got a treaty with the Cherokee Nation. Bulls. No, you don't. You got a treaty with America, with an associated band. That's not the Cherokee Nation. The Cherokee Nation is more than a thousand uh, tribes. And clans together. You mean you remember the thousand tribes and clans? <laughs> oh no, we remember one king. Who, who's in that person the king? First of all, if that treaty was made, it's a violation of the treaty we have with the crown. So the crown treaty will rule supreme. They wasn't allowed to do that. That compromising the affairs of the crown. I first do my first fathers made with the crown. They came along, you can't do that. They didn't have authority to do that. They were claiming to be our Mohawk. I'm, I'm this child of the far civilization. I'm a six, a sus, sus head. You can't be them. Because they say in the Constitution you couldn't do that. So you violated the Constitution. You know about it. You didn't do it according to the Constitution. 
Well, other than that, people wish other what? Uh, you don't live in happy you, you don't live in happy nation. Now, you know, when you're putting the body of evidence on something, you're saying you don't live, you the sins of the little nappy people that sat down with your pen and signed a treaty with the crown. But I ask them a question. Why are you? How are you? Why are you a little nappy more? The first day they're going to say, well, that's our forefathers, our blood. They, they, they may say, the only thing they have to say, all oh, the names change. No, we got something deeper than that. We got blood pedigree. Melon. Anybody with melon automatically fits that chromosome. You don't have no melon. So you're not making it to DNA blood pedigree. You're making it to a name. That means the mother. Or, or, or so and so married an English man or French man and he had her baby and his name was Saint Frederick. And I'm his son and I come to my mother and my mother was Mad Melly. Now that's how he's making the claim now. Taking our land. So um, we got to come from under being a shorty. You know, people want to run around and talk about the UCC. What are we talking about that for? Well, that don't apply to us. But all the bananas, that's 311. I show no one. Say, we exempt from uh, introducing a financial statement. So why you file a financial statement, a de facto trust? And see, this is how the United States and the states are getting uh, wealth. You take your patents and put it into the Department of Patents. The United States are custodial owners. They, 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 they monetize it. The United States and the state of Oregon, yeah, they're giving their wealth away to the, if you're a Moor, let me say something, because I'm not, I'm not trying to compromise on the United States, because I'm not trying to tell them how to do their business. I'm saying that you indigenous and aboriginal and the Moors, and you, and, you, and you are native to the land, you should not be following UCC ones, taking your collateral and your property, Put it into a UCC one into the state of origin. Because what you just did is put it into the bank. And they can monetize that value. The treasury, well, the treasury's a bank. The state has a state treasury. And this is how they rip the people off too. You got a, you say you got a pension, and they've been paying you for the pension for 10, 12 years, you die. Where does your money at? Then what happens? It gets abandoned. It goes to the unclaimed property. The state not gonna say that and they use it as collateral. It's still in your money. Because you don't have, they didn't teach you how to set up when you file a will. They didn't teach you what to claim in your will. So they lied to you. Oh, no, you can't do that because when you die, you, you can't get no more. Well, what happened to my money? And that gives you all my money to also. They know you, you're not going to figure it out. Nobody's going to do it for you unless you do a security audit on your pension. And you know you're supposed to do a county audit on it. And you know you're not smart enough to take it away from you. You got power to take it away from it. Be sure to own nothing. They just a whole investment in fund. See, so wait a minute, they've been investing my money, living like this, and you look at it, you got to take it and go to the back door and use it, and then when they come start threatening, man, I got that like 20 times or more already. Right. Mm -hmm. What you taking from me? I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. So I know there's a lot of boys worried about their pension. They're going to take this. It's a way you can get around that. It's a way I'm not going to go on, 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 on. Live here, but like I say, the way we have to do, we have to come together in our different societies, groups, congregations, temples, and mosques, and we have to form groups. Now, like I said, I often say this before: when you know somebody tells you something, and you now you know, you shouldn't, you should never wait and drag your feet to do something, because don't take these foreigners come from a foreign country law to know when they get here, it's a Bible. So they all come in. It's like if it's like. 50,000 of them, they move all in a group. 50,000 of them committed to put money into a fund. So all of them can borrow from that. That's how they come and buy these stores, these laundry mats. They buy this land. They send him to college and learn this. He learned this. Then they come back and send it back to the country. And they have you call in the country. They do all the contracts and websites for you. They turn around and making all this money doing the farming and stuff. You don't want to farm. You're too lazy. Pakistan, you got chicken, turkey, geese, farm, ducks. They're not stupid. They got three houses, you can walk up seven stories. They grow for all year round. The stuff for all year round. They know when a crisis comes and the economy, they have their own solar panels, their batteries, 
the energy, the water, the livestock, the vegetables, and the herbs. You know, and they got and they got the yachts. They go out to the pier. I mean, I'm about to fly all the crazy. I mean, we just get my boat and take it back and forth to our country. Go back to our land and sit there and talk and talk. And this is already ready. You'll watch how the people in the city eating off each other like cannibals. <laughs> eating off each other, acting crazy. Ooh! And the street getting their head bust open and acting crazy about that pension that they just cut off and that 401k they took. It's happened. It's what happened. It's happened on France now. The people don't play. They, cut, they don't cut them pensions. Hey, but they, the United States lying about that. But oh, yeah. well, see, they don't want they don't want millions of women to work their self out of their problems. See, them people don't want to be self out of their problems. They try to intervene and stop them from doing it, so they can depend on them, so they can become a shorty to them, so they can use their land and resources and the people as commodities. So. We to the place the United States said no. Nope. When the Indians, some of the Indian tribes are friendly recognized how to go up and do something, the United States said no, then we we the trustees for them. But then guess what? They couldn't say this one thing. No, you're not. Well, we sound agree with what you said, you trustees. Well, you're the United States would say. Well, we got a treaty with the Cherokee Nation. You said what Cherokee Nation? More than one. Which one are you talking about? Oh no, we talking about the one we ISS and Sound of Great Britain. We don't know who them was, who it was. was. They give all their rights. Who they want down? I'm not. They don't follow them up to me, not me, not me at all. I'm not claiming nothing for them. I'm gonna claim the ones that have something for their matter. Listen, the ones that had a treaty with Great Britain, Spain, and France. That, I'm the descendant of those people. I don't know who these people are. Right here. <laughs> this Cherokee Nation, Albions. You know, they people that have some blood that they be. So the United States can't speak for us. What happens? The Crown steps in and say, "Well, you can't do nothing about that. They, they first contract with us." What are you going to say? You, who are you the trustee for? The reason why they didn't say that, say, who's taking care of your ASS? Who's stopping the borders from foreign, right now China to come with a foreign military ships, who's going to stop them coming and taking your land, knocking you in your head, taking your women away? We. That's why I say, be careful, wars, when you start talking about your sovereign. Get your stand to protect your woman, your children, your offspring. Be a man. Protect your land and your water. Protect the woman and the children. Then you saw it. That's what we're trying to do. Can't talk about you saw it. You were the phone call at 911. You wanted to turn to represent you. And you joined the damn armed forces fighting for somebody that got your people serving to. Why can't you go out there and protect your people, your wife, your woman, and your children? That's the first thing of sovereignty. This just this discharge of fiduciary duty that was given for me for the celestial realm, the Lord of Celestial Realm, told you what to do down here on earth. Do that. Right now we have a, right now we have a hundred thousand troops coming from a far country. You ain't gonna do nothing but run. Man, what the hell are you doing this day, sir? Goddamn police report, what the hell you want? See a refugee. See that? What the United States, man, they are talking that stuff. What are you man, they are shooting, they will come and get us. How come you can't protect your woman, your children? See, this, I'm talking real time now. If you tell me you can't get up and say, I'm slaughtering my own animals, I'm growing my own food, I'm growing my own herbs, I'm selling them around the world, got my own ship, cargo ship, I've got all around growing, I got plenty of water, I got more energy. If you can't do that, you ain't got nothing. I'll be honest, that come back for me too. I broke the servitude part in the mind. Now I gotta manifest it to my actions and my deeds by getting control of my state. Not only mine, but my fellow brother and the woman. Get her back on me in my care. Where she can look at us and say, you know what, they didn't protect us. Can't do that, boys. We ain't doing nothing. And the only way that was being done back then, they came together. And different societies and form an assembly to protect their people. That's, this is how it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know some more say, man, listen, man, man, I'm in real time now. Man. I'm just going along with the plan. Okay, you go ahead. To the crash. I'm going on the plane to the plane crash. You ask me how, and you wouldn't die. 
That's all. Huh? Stay in the plane then. Plane keep fuel forever. The plane is not going to have fuel forever. Nope. It's going to crash. And I hope when it land, you in a comfortable position in space where it lands at. Because the way they moving now, they want to just they want to just take it out, uh, put you inside a uh, concentration camp. Because you're nationality. This is how bad this thing getting. They just took the um, the Hebrew Israelites and tried to put them down as terrorists. You know who's doing this? These Zion Jews. I'm going to tell you why. The Zion Jews say the cat is out the bag. Let me explain what I mean. They waking up on Israel is not over here, it's over here. And Moab. That's why the land was called the land of the gods. Because Moab and Israel had the pieties and deities that was as short that we used to do. And they know that. The people are waking up, so they're trying to come over here and oppress the people over here. So they can put a, a Israeli state here. But it's not going to work. Well, this was the first when they tried to reach first. Now, let, let me say something. You got a lot of these people that's Jews. They under fear. Uh, we understand mm -hmm. because they, but they see what they do is the ones that follow the teachings of our ancestors, our prophets and seers. I'm not going to slap them in the face because if they follow that, they're going to look at us with a different eye. The fact of the matter is they're not being taught it like Abdul say, in a proper, semantic way. So they in fear of us. Now I'm going to tell you why. And I'll just go for the Hebrew Israelites. They out there being a revolutionary instead of being what? A government. You out there talking about them Zion Jews, but I'm going to tell you something about them Zion Jews. They helped Noble Juali out. You know why? They honored Noble Juali. They gave Noble Juali their money. And his friend. They back Noble Juali. So some of the Zion Jews are not against you. I don't have nothing to say about the Zion Jews. I have nothing to say about the people that do for their women, the contract covers. I just think that the younger ones are not taught the pure doctrine, which is our piety and deity. Tell them the truth. That's our piety and deity. You are Esau. So when you talk about them ancient people, you talk, we're the descendants of these people. So if you love them, love us. That's all. But I'm not going to get mad at people that police their people, take care of their women, teach their, teach their uh, offspring good status, and make sure their offspring is not put into voluntary servitude. How can I be mad at people like that? I love them. I love people that do that. I mean, I understand what you mean. So if they act in that capacity, they'll leave them alone. I'll be honest, you gotta leave people alone. Because you're not doing what they're doing. You make them over there, they're so sensitive. But we still got a chance. We got these books in front of us. These people taking them and using them for real, this form a nation, a state, a people based on our ancestors' writing. What are you gonna do? Now, it's up to you, what you gonna do now? Those are you taking care of their people, they made it. They're taking our history of our ancestors, looking at it, believing it, and saying, this is how we're going to do. We're going to separate ourselves. Ain't nobody superior to us. And I get mad at them. They become bad when you turn around and have an evil eye towards the descendants of the people that is blood pedigree. You hate their children, their offspring. You can't do that. That's the only problem is you're supposed to help them. When I was growing up, I was thinking for the spirit. A lot of Jewish people used to let our people work for them. When well, nobody was there to work for them. I mean, you probably never heard that before. I, I've seen it. They gave you money, come to the house, and y'all need groceries, y'all need this. That's the older Jewish people. But I said, see, this new generation is not as real and honest as the other Jewish people is operating. They don't have the honesty. And they're not well documented in the doctrine of the Torah as it was of the early 19th century was. So I can't talk about the people that do it for their women and their offspring, protecting them. I can't talk about people like that. What I can say is that don't be trying to be in our way when we're trying to do the same thing our ancestors was doing and you're doing. 
It was just for being our way. Now, I said, I ain't nothing to say about the Jews a uh, uh, nation, nothing. As a matter of fact, I understand that word. They part of us. I, I'm not angry at them. So the Hebrews are considered now as terrorists because they're out there talking as revolutionary people, meaning violence, intimidation. Oh, mm. you, oh, you white crocker, all that stuff. That's not that's not called for. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. You have to desecrate your people like that. You don't have to do that. Because I don't see no Jewish people standing out there with no Bible, no Torah, or the corner, or the synagogue talking about niggas is dirt. Niggas ain't nothing. They, they don't be talking like that. So why can't you just teach out of the book the science and then turn around and keep all the negative language, all the negative personal opinions you got out of it and just talk from the, the diet, the deity, and piety of the Torah? And the in jail. Just talk about that. And you're going to have no problems. Now you have to intimidate the people talking about them, call them all kinds of names, white and black men happen. You're talking all that connotative talking, you're intimidating the people. Now I'm talking real time. I don't see no Jewish people, rabbis, or people in the Jewish community stand on corners calling us niggas. I don't see them standing tall. We, we people that didn't do our job and do the faith performance our ancestors did in that book. They're not even on corners talking about us. Matter of fact, they're not even talking about two these synagogues. And you out there talking about them because they're out beyond. They ain't got no milk. That's Esau offspring. And Esau married a bird skinned woman. Stop talking about your people like that. Teach the piety and deity and leave them alone. You don't have to talk bad about them. Now you intimidate your people, and now stuff is happening, and you speaking violence in the air by calling them all these names, speaking negative to them. Now you're a threat. You know why you're doing that? Because you don't know what you're doing. So I should all make. If I go back into that Bible, that book that you got in your hand, you hear a prophet say, a prophecy concerning Edom. You would hear him say that. But he would say, why is a prophecy concerning Edom? But he don't say they disgusting, they nasty, they lying, they ain't no real Jews. You use them in a connotated way. If they speak here, hold the cause of record, yes, they are. They ain't got nothing to do with no, 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 they do commerce, they grow their food, they got land, they got farms, they do export import. So, you know, I seen when I was growing up, I ain't talking about something somebody tell me, I'm talking about I seen, they took care of our people. They gave you credit, they let you work for them. They didn't, they, you know, nobody would give you nothing. They go and bring bags of food over your house and look out for you. I'm talking about something that I seen. Now, I see, you got to understand, I'm not social engineer and uh, what you call psychological, coercing all these fabulous, intellectual prophets that they create, talking these, these opinions and stuff. I don't voice my opinion on what a man say like that. I voice my opinion on real proof. Oh, you fake, man. You told me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If a woman had two offspring out her woman, and one is an albion with no belly, pell, and the other one is burst in, you still count the woman woman. Talk about your brother now. Now, I dare anybody tell me he just came in position by himself. Where he come from? He came from the earth, the woman. And that right, no? All the vegetables and stuff born, everything that grows on the earth comes from what? The earth. Now, watch this. Some of them come and don't have the same texture. All the apple on the tree, they red. Some of them green. Some of them what? Uh, 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 double color, like yellow. But that's apples. They're apples. They come from the earth. Came from the woman. Melanated woman. So the Hebrew Israelites, you know, you are more because the Hebrew Israelite, a Hebrew Charity, Israel, and Moab, you're more because you, you got melanin. 
you from you, you're born because you're from the land of the West. That's number one. So let's not play the game and divide each other. I'm here to tell you, listen, leave the people alone because that's why they, they can't, they won't be able to call us terrorists. You know why? Because we're not, we not out here, we're doing like Noah Girardi did. We're basing our stuff on principles of customary law, norms, and jurisprudence. So these people can't be no terrorists. They operate the highest principle law. They work with any nation want. Their blood pedigree benefits and loading and title and access to their land and water. They grow their food and do commerce and commercial activity. Simple as that. So, we want to get from let have our state of origin so we can become this. That's it. You stand, no majority ain't going to corner. Uh, let, let me say something. I see why they talk about it. some people are hating no majority. Woo, because you took all these intellectual, educated, opinionated prostitutes and you used them. But no Jewali did not go out of the corner calling nobody names. He didn't talk about the Jewish community, the nation. He didn't talk about nobody. You know what Noah Jewali did? Just try to get the people to know and come back for a day. Vessel. How to keep control of your vessel where you come from. How to from your vessel, your blood pedigree, how to use that to make your claims and get what you want. He never did that. So I'm glad to be here. Uh, what's the time there on there? I don't know. That's 20 or yeah. 20 minutes. Anything else, Abdul, you want to um, say? Mm -hmm. Or I'm open for questions. Anybody? Yeah, questions. Yeah, questions, yeah. Uh, questions, anybody? I'm ready. Questions. Mm -hmm. Online, anybody online? I'm ready for the questions. There you go. Yeah. Um, uh, um, yeah, I got it. Go ahead. Great job. Um, oh, okay. Patricia Ann Williams says, Brother Shem, when will you be hosting a share the knowledge session for securing our assets outside of the fraud? I, I, I'm going to do that through the caucus. That's why we build the caucus. See, if something happened to me, you got to have a caucus. That's the that's, 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 Abdul right. That's the main thing that's important. I can get sick and die. I ain't there with you tomorrow. I can get sick and not wake up tonight. Got him, Tamara, and the caucus. That's why we have the caucus meetings. Because it's not entrusted in one person. Now, if you want to do that, you will have to come together and come to the caucus with how we can do that together. Because I'm not doing that individually, because that's not helping our people. We got too many people around us with degrees that know how to build this build this thing now. We got too many people. So if you want that, I can show you, but you gotta have a body of people to come to our caucus so we can make this thing happen. Um, okay, we have another, just I guess it's a question. It says, speak on passport. <laughs> Passports, I said that when we talk. Look at the word, passport. <laughs> Is this documents that you use the pass to a person port, their interest. So, the United States issue a passport, that means that you got, the United States has an obligation international, and that country has an obligation international to international government and treaty and convention to allow each other nationals or citizens to go to each other port and to their jurisdiction, their land. Because now you're going with land now. Now you're dealing with land. Um, we need to get, we want to have that set up as though we have our passports. They set it up now, I think it'd be a million dollars for the software. But I'm going to get with a brother out of Washington, D.C., uh, who's still who's dealing with the U.N., how we want to set that up. And we want to set that up, we will set up to the crown, to the crowns. That's how we want to set it up. So we want to work on that. We, as he's speaking, we're working on that. That's one of the things that we're working on. So we going to have our passports and how we have it is, we'll go to the high contracting parties and we give everybody, this, this is for our government website, this is our government, this is our passports. They go to site to, to, to authenticate our passports, go to this, but now they do. When they want to authenticate someone, they see. They see your passport, your picture, and they know that the country's up and running. Okay, question. Yeah. Um, okay. 
one more question from the Facebook. How can we sign up and get involved with the movement of uh, Cedric uh, Simpson Day? Uh, Tamara, you take care of that, Tamara. Tamara, take care of that. Yeah. Tamara, you want to take care of that? Tamara, you can answer that? Yeah, sure. Well, you asked that question, and I said, Tamara. I said, Abdullah. I mean, I'll answer. Okay. Well, come on, Abdullah. I need you up here because you want to know that. You got your shoes off, man. You can't. Out there. <laughs> huh? I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes. Peace everyone. Yes. Uh, we have a that was we have a uh, the uh, caucus. We're gonna be sponsoring a ten week law course first Saturday. Of March will be the first week of ten weeks. Um, the March seventh will be the first day. The uh, advertising will be online. We'll continue to bring that forth. We go to it'll probably be public posting on House of Bay Waking Your Mind, post on my Facebook page of Lord Bay or Civil Letter, and we'll continue to push that out. Um, the course can I get a Price of the course or no? Three hundred dollars for the course for ten weeks. All right, so that's one. Um, the question is about getting involved with the caucus. Um, <coughs> we, through a letter of commitment, we'll um, give. Um, who do they give the email? Can they send it to me or the email address so they get a letter of commitment that we send out with next month? I'll, I'll post the email address. Yeah. All right, so um, the email address will be posted so that we can send out a letter of commitment. That'll be next month because we, yeah. we're preparing for the course and things that we're you know, getting. Uh, um, we have to approve the seal, the government, national government seal, the constitution. the constitution, and then we have the website up. But we can. Um, be bringing more people into the, the caucus um, next month. And then also, like, so we have the course on March, March 7th. So we just look out for additional information about where, for uh, where, to, where to send your emails to get to receive a letter of commitment. So um, this is, uh, we continue to hope to build this uh, national caucus. And uh, we're looking, I connect me with other body parts that I have. I have connections. Uh, we all have connections in the caucus, and we're looking to expand. And you know, we're open to um, reaching out to other voice body politics and working working with them. You know, yes. Okay. Uh, this question is from Anthony Man Antonio. Has the, he says, "Has the brother? I'm assuming he's brother Shem." Um, implementing any of the processes personally of which he speaks and what would be the difference between what he's talking of setting up and other organizations like the Moors of USAR or of Exxon Moore Empire. Thank you. Well, I'm kind of glad that that question was asked. Uh, asked. They got through uh, answering that question. I'm going to answer this question right here. I had a situation first running with the uh, system when I came aware of who I was. And it was down in uh, North Carolina, Hick Town, Hick Village. And the paperwork that I had was coming from the Wichita Nation, the Empire. And what happened was, based on the paperwork that I had, I thought that it was some people inside the government that was uh, honestly brave and was operating. But what I found out was that there was only a few people inside the Wichita that knew about Drew Pudis, and that was one of the main thing, good brother and his wife. I was left down there, locked up in Hick Town, in North Fork, Town Township, and I stood in the square of my paperwork and who I was. And I'm speaking from a stranger, that's how I came home back where I was at. I wasn't in no more about me and another more. Another man was out in the car. 
I was there for about no more than about three hours. Now that's in the hate town. The next time I have a problem in Philadelphia. They charged me about seven felonies, seven to eight felonies, a lot of misdemeanors count the felonies for uh, counterfeit and all this stuff behind all that Aboriginal paperwork and my ID. Now at this time, we didn't have the structure that I was involved with was once again an infrastructure. I and the man acting as counsel for me in the War Science Temple stood on my square, meaning that I stand in my proper person. I went to the courtroom. I never let the court get jurisdiction power to speak. I, I, was, I had plans on removing it. I didn't have to do nothing when I filed a corporate in the civil court, in their civil court. All I know, the case got bounced around, so I went in one day, and the judge told the assistant district attorney to be quiet and took a bunch of folders. I'd never seen this in my life. And put a bunch of folders in one hand like this and took my folder and had it like this. And said, why do you want to go out and live when you got all this right here on this right here? Right. And discharge the case. So what I'm saying is that there's been times that I've been at the circle, like a round table circle with attorneys and degree people, and trying to put this together. The problem was, is the people had bad intentions. And Abdul know because like I said, I met Abdul, he was my first teacher. I was Johnny Cochran, going to the courtroom representing people, didn't have a law, didn't have a bar associated card. And the guy's the only man don't come in and do this stuff and don't go to jail. You know what you're doing. But when I, when I met Abdul, I realized I was playing with fire. Because I wasn't my proper person. I ain't got no business in to do what I was doing. So I've been around a lot of round tables and groups. But the reason why nothing never got put together, because it always was somebody had their personal agenda. They always had thought of this. They always trying to want to do this. They don't want to do this. They don't want to do this. We try to form an assembly. Everybody come together and come together to hear from their different regions and send their uh, delegated person to come and build a central assembly for us to operate. That fell apart. So. I was prophesied that I was going to run into somebody who's going to help me out. And I, I was going to get someone that was going to get us to the next level. And I, he had come across, I run across Abdul again. And he'd been trying to get with me. And then one day we met 22nd Street and we talked for a couple of hours and Abdul had it. I made up my mind, I'm going to follow Abdul, I'm going with Abdul. Man, I ain't messing with these people. Hey, they're not doing that. They trying to do that. Abdul knew right from the door that they need the structure. So I can say this. I've been around people that say structure. I even sat down with people that's on the more science temples. I sat down with a man that's trying to shake a more science temple in Ohio. And the person, I'm trying to do something for him. The man told me to leave that man alone because he let his son get locked up for him in his name. I said, what? So as you see what we're dealing with. So... This is the first time I wish some people, indigenous, knowledgeable Moors, that want to do something internationally, government to government relationship, and ain't got no problem trying to sacrifice to do it. So if something, you want to be a part of something, ask yourself a question. You see all these organizations out here, I, I never speak bad about them. I always try to speak to encourage them and instruct them when there's something wrong that can affect all of us as a group, as a whole. You're the whole way. What you're doing can damage what I'm doing. So I got a right to speak out of that now. All I'm saying is that we're trying to come together and create an international role, embody with all the different regions, areas we at in the maximum. Send your roll up, send your roll up, send your roll up. What society are you from? What temple are you from? Send it up so we get a body to some and get it to the international people, the rightful authority that can put that in the system. So that's what I'm trying, that's what I want to put together with the caucus. That's what we have to do. So you said what's different than all the rest of them? I'm trying to do something international. I'm not trying to be recognized by the United States. I'm not trying to say, take, send, send our packages in the mail, tell you to fill it out, and you ain't got nobody in council to represent you all. You don't even know what to do when you go in court. 
I'm trying to tell you, you get totally out of the system through the IRS, the world bodies, through forms, regulations, procedures, and remedies. How to get out of the system and how to separate yourself from the trade name, the surely ship name, the debtor, and become the creditor again. Be your national name as the creditor, the heirs of the land. So that's how we have to work that. We have to get started. I, I buy you know, I'm never that talk about none of you other people. I'm not biased against nobody. If you feel as though you're a more holy, more simple science, and you say that's your question, okay, what are they doing for you and answer me? I'm asking you. You shouldn't have a United States passport. So you have to work ourselves out of this condition. We're in a condition that we got to wean and work ourselves out of the first income, education. The mind starts right here. Then we got indicated by putting ourselves together so we can have a structure to go to the people. Like I told you, I do. When I put the letter, put it on the gym, see, that ain't getting mail. A castle going in. Walk in there, deliver it, get a step, and come out. Ain't nobody mail, nobody nothing. It's going to be delivered, hand delivered, walk right in. We know the agency. I, mean, I, I, I told them the agency. He broke it down. See me? Because y'all don't know the agency. That's the difference. We, we have to navigate. The council is navigating to get us back home. We're getting on a vessel to navigate it back to our domicile lands. The rightful latitude and latitude where we belong. So we're not claiming to be a, a savior, a messiah. We claim it to create something that all the more, whether you're a society, a ecclesiastic soul corporation, to have some way to go and say, hey, this is who we is, this is what we can do, we glad. This is to the world who we are, internationally. We're not separated. This is who we are. We up this, we will be located this far in the region of the world right here in the vessel. We over here. So we have a national government to protect whatever we do in South and our devils in that continent where we travel. Or we go to Australia, we go to Canada, we go to France, we got the state immunity. Some have it, the council. We buy land, we buy land treaty. Did we say about we buy land? Yes. We do export, import, and securities. We don't license, no paper fees or that. We go to the platform. What are you talking about? All these that don't that apply to all these stretches. This is the point. You're doing securities. Commodities. You're doing bartering. My Bible up there, what was the scriptures? I don't buy to me, I'm a whore. 1856 treaty. I don't do that. You got to say, you can any way go where you want to go. You can back on the Silk Road, baby. Yup, yeah, absolutely. She said back on the Silk Road. That's, the, that's what we trying to get to. So if you're part of something, you, your society don't understand, contact your sister Tamara. If you got to come down and just give your educational course, if you got to stay down for two days, just talk to your sister, pack the time she want to package it, and we'll come down for two days. And just give you... A, a presentation for two days of what we do and how you could be involved. I don't like talking to the phone. They ain't get no way unless we sit down there in front of you. So if you got a temple or congregation, you want to do that, contact the sister, set up the sister. She's certified. How we set the finance up? We'll come down for two days and we'll set up everything. May have to do time or the car. We'll set up what we can do to bring this together and the priest can bring this in the, the whole together. Ain't nobody trying to try to do one thing and run in the bridge and run over here. Right. So we gotta have everything. Cause we do need finances under the act of Algeria. We gotta have our police force. We gotta have our banks. And according to the act of Algeria to protect Morocco, France, and Spain is obligated to help us get our financial banks and police back moving. They are obligated. We supposed to have police out there. I'm not mad at the Jewish people. They got police out in Brooklyn. But in the society, government people. What you what do we have? We sit back on the back end talking about it. That ain't gonna do no good. I'm not a player hater. I'm not sitting in the back playing hate nobody. That's doing what we supposed to be doing. So we're trying to do something where we tax everything. We're taxing all the people on it. They're part of this society, they're part of this temple, they're part of this. This is where we come together collectively, naturally, as these people. So when they get it, ain't nobody left out of the system. Anything else? And this thing is for real too.
Because they already trying to set up while we sleeping, working, and drinking, eating. They trying to set up a way to get us out of here. Yep. And they said, we might can do it. We might can do it. They go to, they go to Hebrews talking all this loud and talk. We might can do it. They go to more street paper terrorists, intimidating, go there through it and talk about it. We might can do it. They go do it to themselves. They go do it to themselves. Because they just don't know how to do like this man did. Just keep moving. Just keep moving forward. Don't say nothing. No, but you already went in the corner talking, reading out of a book, how the stream. I'm being honest. With you. If you start teaching, you in the synagogue, nobody don't walk in. That's that's they, that's his own they lost. That's all. It's that you ain't get tight. Any more questions?
Um, for that event, we will also have vendor slots. We only have room for 10 vendor slots for March the 20th to 21st, for 10 vendor slots, and one is already taken. So, nine vendor slots. And he just looked at it and like, you better say one is taken. <laughs> so, nine vendor slots at 125 notes for both days. That includes both days. So, that information will be on there. So, if you're looking to, um, be a vendor, you have a, a business you would like to roll out, it'd be a great opportunity. It'll be two days of vending, March the 20th and 21st. Um, what else we have? We'll also be working on a program with uh, King Simon for numerology, numeration of lines. So working on that for April when he um, traversed back up north from his trip down south. So working on that. And we're also working on some other workshops we'd like to roll out such as for our children, the children's corner. It's something that we wanted to do um, for 2019. Um, I really hate to say this, but I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> we have a vast number of audience online. Mm -hmm. We have people that, we have more people that travel from Texas, California, Florida, New York, um, territory, um, not, yeah, not even territory, corporations, from those yeah. corporations, those jurisdiction areas. Um, yeah. Georgia, um, did I say Florida? Minnesota, yeah. Minnesota, yeah. North Carolina, yeah. and right here in this, in this jurisdiction, no. Yeah. And unfortunately, we do not receive the amount of viewers that we have that tune in and receive the knowledge and body information that Grand Sheep, Tosh, Sharif Bay, pull out, um, expose out. I mean, it's like life-changing information. If it don't change your life, I don't know what you're doing. Um, Brother Abdullah Salim Mosey Bay, life-changing information just in your language alone will change that. And you, once your language has changed and you have that understanding, you get to the point where you don't care what other people say and feel about who you are because you are now standing and in, in rooted in truth. And then, you know, to have now the connection with Brother Shem, Malachi Bay, as well as we had teachers such as Brother Aaron L. who taught RIT um, workshop. He had the RIT workshop. And Father Hannibal Bay that taught, um, you know, understanding um, meditation and spirituality and things of that nature. Unfortunately, and I really hate to put it out there, we do not receive the online support. We don't see one note, we don't receive two notes, we don't receive anything for online support. Just the, just the just, I, 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 I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Wanna come on there? No. Okay. <laughs> Y'all told me to get up and come up. Now I'm in the front of the camera. Everyone's up. Okay. And unfortunately, and you know, I, I, like I said, I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. I think that, please, let's, let's practice in the spirit of Ubuntu. Help us help you. And that's what the House of Reawakening Mind is doing. They're helping to reawaken you to your ancient principles and your ancient foremothers and forefathers. You know, so with that being said, it should be not a problem to commit to a two, a, a two notes, the five notes, to help keep the lights on, to help keep the internet on. We do not have control of that. We're not going to be rubber stamping a bill of attainer every month and playing around with it because guess what? We already know the ramification of how that operates. Right. With the candles, you can't get a signal by candle, you know, out to the world. So we operate in the principles to where we know that we do not have control of the electric currents that flows in here, the satellites in the sky that will send a signal out for the internet. So the lights are paid to a corporation. The water flows into the, a building. So we have to take care of that. And, and it breaks my heart. I, I see Dr. G at times personally take funds from her own personal pocket, her own personal war chest, our own currency to keep these lights on, water flowing, doors open, 
just so people online, not even the ones, that, I'm not talking about the ones who come here and commit and, and give, but for the people online to be able to receive this knowledge to help save their nation and their kin folks. And that is not returned back, and we sit around and talk about why we don't have no unity. It's an energy source. If I plug my cell phone into the socket, I'm hoping it gives me currency to charge back, right? It's going to give me something back. I want something back from it. That's right. Okay, so why are we understanding those principles when it comes down to the currency with one another? That's right. Absolutely. You know, so please, I don't, I'm not going to beg. I, I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to do that. But just, um, I'm just going to put the call out that your heart will be strict to support a facility that supports you and your kin folks to support a facility that is um, has put everything on the table to help us raise up to where we know we should be. Um, and then, you know, also we have our, our, our lecturers that prepares for days and hours for days, weeks for these events. Grand Sheik prepares you know, it may appear that sometimes you, you feel like, oh, I've heard that before from Grand Sheik. I've heard that lecture. Repetition is good because sometimes I think that they created that Twitter and Instagram with those small characters just to keep your mind at a little short frame. And, and Grand Sheik, had, he's constantly repeating the information so it can get into our cellular memory for understanding to get you to move, to get us to move. You know, we, we are even becoming comfortable knowing that we we partially woke, but we partially sleep. We get comfortable with that. Yes. Can you be honest and tell me how many people do the test, please? Well, you know, it's, it's, it, it, unfortunately, we have two people in the house today, and I, and I we thank you for coming out. Besides we thank you for your support. And then we have our two lecturers, and then I'm on the camera. You know, and, and Dr. G in the back, and if she don't stop shouting from the back of the room, she don't be in front of the camera. So, you know, um, these people have graciously they said, you know, hey, forget the rain, forget the cold, I'm coming out. And I'm coming out to support, because they support me a lot, just being here. And it's unfortunate that our people will still get up there, put on their coats, they go to their job, but yet they won't come out to get the knowledge that's needed. And then as soon as these doors, we put locks on these doors and no more, they gonna be like, oh, what happened to House of Reawakening Minds? You is what happened to House of Reawakening Minds. That's what happened to it, you. Lack of support. So I'm not gonna get on the soapbox. So I just got on it, but I'm jumping off. So um, I would just hope that what I've said will prick your heart to support. We're not reading your paragraph and asking for your support. We, you're getting enough knowledge that we can save ourselves, and that's what we're that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. You know, that's what we're doing. We, we're doing our part. We're connecting with the prophet, prophet Noah Ali, and you know, it's sad when I tell people I didn't know about prophet Noah Ali until I was 44. That's sad. You know, and then my major question is, why is he hidden? Why are they still hiding him? You know, that's like opening up Pandora's box when you really get to it. Exactly. When you really get to it and start talking about Prophet Noah Drali, that's like opening up Pandora's box. So I can see why they don't want his name resonated like that. That's a vibration. That raises a lot of vibration there. So, um, once again, we'd like to just thank you for coming out. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your support. We hope we will have continuous support to keep the doors open, to keep the lights on, to keep the water flowing, to, to keep the information flowing. You know, that's, that's, what our, um, that's what our petition is. That's what we're manifesting. That's what we have our candles lit for on, um, on the 12th at 12 o'clock. The candles was lit to manifest, you know, for the expansion of House of Reawakening Minds, and we would have an overflow, you know, continuously. So we can, 
there would not be a situation as to where we could say, well, we're not teaching our children, or we have a school around the corner for that. You know, we, we fly to help create a school here. That's what we're trying to do. So, um, you want to close us out, Dr. King? No. No? <laughs> no, I just thank, I just thank you, Sister Cameron. Thank you for, for that. And um, I guess I should grab the mic. Here's the mic. Give me the mic. Come on, walk around. You want to come up here? I know, it's not our day. It's not our day. <laughs> and guess what? This, this month also, um, we have a, a change. Impress us. Oh, yes, yes. Impress us the fourth Friday. We are substituting. Impress us for our brother Jamal Talibi. His name is like yours. Jamal Talibi. They're coming back. Abdullah Bay. Out of the Rhode Island jurisdiction, we'll close out on that final four Friday. Right. We'll so, have it. so we're, we're yeah, we're gonna step aside. And yeah, then, we're gonna step aside, and um, we don't mind those new boys coming in. I'm a new boy. I'm a novice. So hey, so um, please come come down, and um, it's gonna be a it's gonna be an event. Yeah. Right. And I appreciate those who and I wanted to say this because I get this. You know, I see the see what's coming in and so forth, and, and, and you all know who you are that support House of Reawakening Minds, and, and Sister Cameron wasn't implying um, that we, we don't get to maybe acknowledge when they're on Cash App, it's easy to hit a, a love of heart and send it back, but on PayPal, it's a little different, but we want you to know that we appreciate everything that's, that's said, and it's particularly or especially those of you who, you know, do it regularly, and we, it, it doesn't matter how, how large or small it is, it could be one note, when you look at by, by this time tomorrow, um, 15,000 views will be on the on this video, or you know, or, or, or perhaps. How about a note? <laughs> There's one note, you know what I mean? Uh, or 50 cents, if you will. We would, it would help. I can do like a commercial. Let's give 35 cents. <laughs> That's right. You know? But we, you know, we're not about that. We're not up there. We're not here to, to, to beg and whatever. But I really wanted to be honest. You know, and, and maybe you can hear the echo, because I hear the echo. Y'all don't hear the echo. You hear the echo. If this room was full, you wouldn't hear the echo, because we would absorb the sound. You're getting quality, quality information. And so what I'm going to do is commend um, Brother Abdullah and Brother Shem for pouring out their hearts as if the room was full. It's not full, but, you know, it was about 60-some folks on line. Of course, it dropped down by about 20 when we started talking about support. About, yeah, you know, then about 20 dropped off when we started talking about support, but that's okay. Um, because when they see the replay, they're going to hear this. And But I am very grateful for those of you who have been supporting us um, down for the years. I want to say that December 18th, when we come back, it'll be the 19th. So December 18th will be the, what, 11th anniversary of my awakening. Oh. Okay. And it was because of my awakening, you know, many of you all know I was a pastor, apostle, um, because of my awakening, the new assignment, and the new and approved assignment of reawakening minds came through. And that's why we're able to be here. And that's why I'm committed to doing this. And, and that's why, you know, like Sister Cameron said, you have to do what you have to do. Um, and sometimes we don't want to say it, and people are like, well, how come they haven't discharged, you know, in a real world, we wouldn't discharge the thing, but we still, I'm going to be honest, we still pay a mortgage on this building. <laughs> and so, and I have never missed a mortgage payment even after the congregation left, but they were all gone by the very, very beginning of 2011. They were gone. Okay. So we have done what we had to do in order to make sure that the mission continues. And so we appreciate those of you who see that for what it is. There's nothing in this for Sister Tamara or myself, and certainly not for our lecturers who pour out their hearts sometimes for nothing, because if you count the number of people and what we charge, so we took a few, few, few um, notes out of the bank today so that we could have at least something for you all. You know, and we love you and we appreciate you. Um, for doing what you're doing, even though, you know, the support is not here in person. But people are getting it, and I believe, you know, like, the last time we had to say, it's been about this, you know, when is the best time of year? It's the end of the year. 
And I know that people are, you know, doing their thing with, you know, Thanksgiving no, and these things that they, holidays that you do get into them. But, you know, we are coming consistently and bringing you what we think is um, necessary for the upliftment of fallen humanity. We're doing our part and we appreciate you. So we're not out here, you know, trying to beat you up. We love you. We're just saying, you need to know the state of the nation right now. This is a nation. And if you want to keep it going, something else got to start flowing in on a consistent basis. But we thank you. We appreciate you. And we thank you so much. Um, for coming so that, that, you know, legitimately they were talking to some folks in person, you know, as opposed to just the, the, those of who are online. But we are internally grateful for what has happened here over the last, um, that's 11, eight years, 10 years. It's been, the 18th will be the anniversary. I'm going to have to go back and figure it out. When you get old, forget. It's been a long time. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm glad I'm woke. Or, you know, and, and this, this tonight's class was very, very enlightening and informative, just like the ball ball. So with that said, we are going I thought to- I going to close out with a poem. A, a, a poem? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, you didn't tell me that yet. You just, you just no, told me. I thought you just had one in your heart. <laughs> I, don't have a, I don't have a poem in my heart, unfortunately. Um, so um, I won't- uh, Oh, you don't sing a song? Oh, what song is that? You're talking about- uh, Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that either. <laughs> Look there, but I'd rather go down there and grab my phone and, and read a poem than, than sing a song. But thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank we'll, you we'll for coming out we'll, and I got a new book coming out, so just I, I'm putting it out there in the atmosphere because I want to have my new book out by uh, March, March when we have the event. And we really want those of you who have wanted to come to, to Delaware Corporation, Jordan Edition, or whatever this is to come out, we are gonna have a Moorish summit, we're gonna have a panel. We, we don't have all of the folks that we know, you know, well, you know Grand Sheik and Brother Abdullah and Brother, Brother Sham will be here. We'll have some feminine energy. We're gonna have a panel uh, where we'll be able to, some of those things that we can't talk about online, we'll be able to, you know, you'll be able to talk about those kinds of things because it'll be in a closed um, situation, but we can have a more of a meeting of the minds. We have um, things that we wanna talk about from the nation stand, standpoint, and we're going to do some metaphysical stuff because it is the spring equinox. So we have some exciting metaphysical stuff going on. And then, um, I know I don't look like it, but I'm like Grand Sheep. We drink out the same fountain. <laughs> that fountain, the fountain, of melanin. The fountain of melanin youth. Mm -hmm. So um, I will have uh, turned 65 that week. But on the 21st, um, we will celebrate my 65th solar return. So I, I came to the conclusion that I'll only be 65 once. That's right. Um, this time. <laughs> this time. So we want you to come out and be a part of that. Sister Chairman, I've already told you um, it is, um, they're going to be, we have vendor slots and we have a dedicated area. It is not going to be here. It is, we, we have, we have had to shell out some serious bucks for this, this, this event, this two day event. It will not be here. Um, but we were able to find a venue that melanated people own. That's right. So we will have hotel information coming up, registration information. I think it's 125, by the way. Yes. For the two days. For the two days. For the two days. All meals are included. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the last one with the celebration, I think it's a, like a full course. It's a full course. It's a full course. So we. Well, all of them are full. All of them full course, but not like the last one. Yeah. So we want, you know, we'll have a music and dancing and stuff to end that, that the two day celebration. And we want you to come. So if you are, you know, watching us and you are I've always wanting to come, then please come for this. Um, we'll have oh, the event yeah. right now. It's limited to 150, 150 people. Okay. Yeah. So we know that 15,000 of you are going to see this. So only 150 of you, the first 150, will be able to partake in it. And then, of course, I probably got some family that wants to try to come. You got family? You got seven? I mean, I got kinfolk, excuse me. I got children. But every now and then he say fam too. He, we, so we skip up. We split up. You know my heart. I got children. Yeah, you got to go. And you have children. No, I have children um, and, and they probably want to come. And they're not yet where we are. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going we're gonna to reserve a few tickets 
that are just for the event, um, the last event only, just for those people that can't come and get the full knowledge. But I think everybody should come for everything, including my children. So thank you again. Um, we get ready to lose our two people, <laughs> our two guests, and we appreciate you coming out. And we appreciate yes. you, 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 and you, and we love you. And keep on um, tuning us in, and please share. When we post, please share it with people. Please bring them in on the feed so that they will know that um, this is what we're doing at House of Real Waking Life. We're going to slide out. I have a slide we got, so we got, now we got to slide out. I'm on, I'm on. And we got to turn catch. She works one camera and I work the other. You want to stand up here while we slide Yeah, because we get ready. Here, take it. So we get ready. Yes, absolutely. Um, my book, um, Illuminati and the Look like of the Mind. Look like a guy we'll be back on the market. Uh, they have pre have pre orders. You're still going on the Illuminati on. and the Illumination Divine. Go to moresandmaistry.org. Uh, moresandmaistry.org for the pre order of Illumination. Illuminati. So it wasn't on. Divine. Look. Moresandmaistry.org. Yeah, moresandmaistry.org. For the look. For the pre order this one of Illuminati and Illumination Divine. I knew it. I was thinking. Yes. So, thank you again for your attention.